If this race had gone off like it was supposed to 48 hours ago, you would have had the best drivers calling the race. Unfortunately, because <laughs> the rain delay, you only so get wrong. you only get two of them because I'm up here with Michael Waltrip, Jamie McMurray, I'm Adam Alexander. You you don't take offense to that, do you? I mean, a little bit. But you guys are good drivers. I'm not. I just I just think it's funny. You can't our, back out of it now. Okay, our drivers only went away because all those folks are preparing for the Coke 600. You'll see later today on Fox. You get the three of us, so you have to wait 48 hours to go racing. What do we expect from the teams, the drivers, and maybe more importantly, this track, Michael? Uh, the B team here. We think, <laughs> and it's really important to see how this track widens out. There's traction compound up high. You can run right out next to the fence. You can run as low as you want to. This track is so much fun as a driver because of those options. And Jamie, I think I love watching and running the top more than the bottom, but both of them are really fast. Yeah, and we saw uh, on Friday in practice there were guys that could run either lane that they wanted. I think the big unknown today, at least you know down in the garage earlier with you, Adam, is just what's the track going to be like? We've had the Air Titans on it for five or six hours yesterday trying to get the track dry. A lot of unknowns heading in today, and I can't wait to find out what happens. The one thing that really has surprised us so far this season is the fact that Junior Motorsports, who won here a year ago, has not won so far in 2023. Here's the comparison last year to this year through the first 11 races. They had won four times at this point a season ago. They won 15 races over the balance of the campaign, put three drivers in the championship four. Maybe today is the day Justin Allgaier is starting on the pole for JRM. Let's hear from our pit reporters now. We start with Regan Smith. Well, Adam, good morning. And you mentioned Justin Allgaier starting on the pole after a great qualifying session on Friday for him. And those wins that Junior Motorsports don't have yet, he is well aware of that. So close in this race one year ago. I spoke to him a little while ago. He said this one would mean the world to him today because it is the home track for all these teams. And more importantly, nobody has really stamped their name on the Xfinity Series Series this year as a championship favorite. The team told me they need to rattle a couple off right now and let everybody know that they are one of the favorites for this championship this season. Keep an eye on him today. Josh? We've got a driver change in the 10 car. Kyle Busch is out, and Justin Haley, another cup driver, will step into the 10 for Colleg and do the double dip today. As you can imagine, Haley had to get here early to make sure he was fitted correctly for the seat. They had to make some changes because, of course, Haley just a little bit smaller than Kyle Busch. Now, his biggest concern, though, he said he hasn't been on a mile and a half in an Xfinity car in over two years, so it's going to take him a while to get into the groove of things. He's going to start from the back, but he knows he has a fast car. Now, let's see what Justin could do with it. I'm disappointed that we don't get Kyle Busch because he's been so successful over the years at Charlotte Motor Speedway, but anxious to watch Justin Haley, who has two starts this year in the 10 car, and numbers don't lie. He's finished 10th in both of those <laughs> races. Let's dial up the man that won here a season ago, Josh Berry, Michael. You got it, Adam. Josh Berry, Michael Waltrip, and the Fox team. Do you copy, buddy? Yes, sir. I got you. Well, you won here a year ago. And it uh, looks like you're getting passed right now, which is a bit of a concern. Uh, how do you feel about today's race, and what did Friday uh, give you for information to go win this race again this year? Yeah, definitely. You know, we didn't have a great Friday, I'll be honest. But you know, these guys worked hard over the last couple of days to you know, get the car a little bit better for me, a little bit closer to what we had last year. We got a great pit crew sitting there ready to go that's uh, going to help get us the spots. And you know, we need some great work from the back normally, so today's going to be no different. You go into the back because you worked on your car, you didn't like it Friday, is that the deal? No, we had an issue with uh, power steering. It could have could have been part of our problem Friday, but it's all fixed now, and uh, we're going to go after them here. All right, you're always fun to watch, bud. Have fun today. Thank you. I can't believe when you look at the history for Josh Berry in the Xfinity Series, how much success he has had at mile and a half tracks. You and I were talking about this during practice the other day, Michael. His foundation is as a short track racer. And since he's come over to the Xfinity Series running full time, he's enjoyed great success at these intermediates. Here is the list of drivers going to the rear. It is long. Ryan Sieg did make a qualifying run, had an engine problem in practice. They go back there. Jeffrey Earnhardt, Kyle Sieg. We've talked about Haley in for Kyle Busch. Stefan Parsons also going to the back today. That's all fun for us, Adam. We're going to see some really good cars fighting from the back to get there. Sammy Smith starts 18th in the 18. 
we got his heart rate monitor in. I can't wait to watch this when that green flag goes in the air, Jamie. Yeah, we saw in practice his heart rate got pretty high. And I, this is one of my favorite parts of the Xfinity Series, us being able to view the heart rate of these drivers, how different it is for each of them. Expect this not to be as high as normal, Michael, just because it's not quite as hot today. These guys, and, and you know this, Jamie, are in incredible shape. They, they work hard to do their craft on the racetrack, and that means a lot of time in the gym. Field is rolling, ready to take the green flag. And they're at pace speed behind our Toyota GR Super. The 2023 model is our pace vehicle today. Justin Allgaier won the pole. Second time he's done it at Charlotte. Eighth time in his career. He takes the inside lane. Is outside John Hunter Nemechek on the front row for the fifth time this season. Uh, lights are back on on the yeah, pace I was, car, Adam. I was all amped up and ready to go, and then they... Flip the lights back on. Got word they're checking the windshields on these cars because, you know, there has been a mist. And the track is dry. Looks like it's in really good condition. But these lingering showers and mist have just not been able to dry up. And so we'll continue to watch things. And now I guess we got a chance to dial up Cole Custer, who's good in practice here on Friday. Hey, Cole, it's Jamie Mack up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you guys. All right, it's been a couple of days of rain, but on Friday it looked like you had one of the cars to beat. What are you looking for in this first stage that you can apply towards the end of the race? Man, I mean, this first stage is going to be a little bit different just because the track's going to be green here. The resin is still going to be working in. So it's going to be a little bit hairy here to start, um, especially in the lane that we're in, I think, on the top. But I think we'll be all right. We have a good 3D system Ford Mustang. Hopefully keep it up here. Um, just be there at the end. But this is a cool racetrack. We're excited to get going. You can really run around the whole track here. All right, we got a little report of, of some drops on the windshield. What do you see out there? Got a little bit of mist. I mean, it's kind of at that stage where you don't really know if you're good to go or if you're not good to go. It's, it's Definitely you can see it on the windshield, but it's not raining hard. I bet we'll get going here soon. All right, man. Well, good luck. We'll enjoy watching. Thank you, guys. Let's listen in to seven team radio, Justin Allgaier. Waved it off, waved it off, waved it off. The mist isn't bad enough for them to wave it off right here. That's the uh, commentary right from the driver's seat, seeing what's on the windshield. Spotter Eddie DeHaan telling him, uh, telling him they got some moisture in the air. See if we can get one to go here. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm good with NASCAR being a little cautious. We've waited two days. It's it's fine to wait a couple more laps here and, and see what we're going to have. And Michael, you and I talked about it. You can kind of see in the horizon a little bit of fog rolling in here. But if if Justin feels like it's good, then we got to assume that's going to be okay. Man, I love the driver's eye view. Don't you, Adam? Just being able to sit there on his helmet, see what he's feeling. Feel what he's seeing? All those things. Uh, one or the other, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lights are out. We have been given the one to go. And, Jamie, you have you and I have both been in this situation. A little mist in the air. The track's green. <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of energy in those cars right now, isn't it? Wondering what's going to happen? Yeah, and I, I honestly was always just wanting to go racing. Unless it, unless it just seemed, you know, too much. I mean, a little bit of mist. I was always like, let's just get it started. The track's dry right now. We know once they get going, it seems like it, it works out for them as long as it doesn't get any heavier. So, yeah, it looks like we're going to get to go green right here. Mitch in the front row. Justin Allgaier, John Hunter Nemechek. Ryan the Herbs coming from 13th today. You talked to his teammate Cole Custer. Here's a guy that needs something good to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I love being able, those in cars, to see in their eyes and, and wondering what are they thinking. Like, we're coming to this green flag. Cole Custer mentioned that outside lane's probably not the preferred lane. They talked about having the traction compound on the high side of the track. When it's cold, especially after it, it's rained like it has, that's going to be a little bit slick to start with. So all these guys having a little bit of a different agenda, wanting to just get this, this single filed out, get this race started, and kind of get in a flow. We saw it a lot, too, during the truck race on Friday night. So much on these restarts is who's behind you and how much help can they give the big shove as you come across the start finish line and take it down into turn one. Yeah, you want the guy behind you to be right on your rear bumper, giving you that shove. All right, we reset. All guy on the pole takes the inside lane. After a 48 hour wait, it's time to go racing in NASCAR's Xfinity Series. Off we go from Charlotte. The 
19 is nose down on the bottom. RD3 wide, there's no big surprise. You know that this is a time you really need to get some positions when they're all stacked up, and that's what's exactly what's going on. Teammates for second, Nemechek in the 20, the 19 Ty Gibbs, the reigning champ making his second start of the year. How about four wide, Jamie? I said three. <laughs> four won't work, will it? They singled it out. Wow, what action we have. Yeah, Brett Moffitt not reserved at all. Went to the very top of one and two. Felt good to him. He thought, I'll try to get in three and four. And you're just trying to get some clean air on the nose. He's able to capitalize on it. Forward performance onboard camera with Riley Herbst. Looking back at Carson Hosebar. Getting racy into 77. We're three wide again. Wow, what a run on the outside by Anthony Alfredo in that Andy's Custard car. Yeah, Sam Mayer's not liking the balance of his car. You've seen him stuck in the middle of three wide the last two corners. He's just trying to get to the bottom, get calmed down. Most likely that car being really loose right now at the start of the run. What about Josevar? He was six at Darlington. Talked to him this morning. Loves his car. Said he just got tight off turn four. He thinks he could have had a shot at the pole. He was in the green as he exited turn two. So uh, watch that 77 car you see right there getting up in line on the outside. Part-time effort. As you said, he was so good at Darlington a couple of weeks ago in his second career start. And I'd say there's plenty of confidence there because when you look at what he's doing in the full-time ride in the Craftsman Truck Series, he's been impressive. Whoa, tight racing off turn four. Toyota on board. This is the rookie Sammy Smith, won earlier this season at Phoenix. That was amazing, by the way. He just executed late restarts. He did everything perfectly to get the win. Teammates at Colleg, Daniel Hemrick, 2021 champ, drives to the inside of the 16 Chandler Smith, the other rookie who's won this season. This gets tied off turn four. Well, and you can see there's some mist on the windshield right there. So the, the drivers know that's in there. You see Sammy Smith just gets into the left rear of the 78 car right there. No harm, no foul. You, you say no harm, no foul. <laughs> Sammy says no harm, no foul. Maybe we should get some 78 team radio. <laughs> see what <laughs> Anthony Alfredo opinion. thinks. Yeah. He's not going to give him an ice cream, I'll tell Probably you that. <laughs> oh, Whoa. Don Hunter, really <laughs> loose. Is that a result of the mist, or do you think he just had a little bit of a moment there? Well, I would say you see him getting his left sides on the paint. The paint has a lot of grip, but when it gets wet, if there is any moisture on that, that could get slick for those guys. So you want to be self, uh, conscious of that. How cool is that car? Just a really beautiful Mobile One paint scheme. Red, white, and blue. This is the best weekend of the year for paint schemes. All red, white, and blue cars are beautiful, and everyone brings those out for here. I love seeing what the sponsors come up with for all these guys. Racing for fourth, Brandon Jones in the nine. Came over from Joe Gibbs Racing, driving now for Junior Motorsports. And inside of him, Cole Custer making his return to the Xfinity Series, where Whoa. he was so good in 2019, hasn't won this year, and nice little save there. Well, and you, you see Cole Custer had Brandon Jones right on his outside. He also had the two cars, Sheldon Creed, right up behind him. It's really the worst-case scenario for Cole in that situation, but is able to clear Jones, and looks like he has a great car. We know on Friday we thought he had one of the best cars. He's making his way to the front right now. And I think my sleeper could be Sheldon Creed. Down on the bottom, Really good in practice. Loves this racetrack and looks like he's moving forward. He's a Truck Series champion. Second year full-time in the Xfinity Series. And boy, has he made some gains. When you look at his performance last year in his rookie season over what he's done so far this year, it's been impressive, the improvements they've made. One thing about Brett Moffitt, Michael, he's committed. He's committed <laughs> to run the top. But I feel like he likes running the top at most tracks that we go to. We see him capitalize on that a lot. And he's committed to that basically this, this whole race so far, all nine laps. And you know what I said at the beginning of the show, I love that line. And he's taking advantage of it. It's up there, and he's trying to make it work. We're going to get a competition caution right around lap 20. Just about halfway there, Justin Allgaier started on the pole, and he's led them all so far from Charlotte.
Sunday, week eight of the 2023 USFL season is on Fox with back-to-back -back games as Memphis takes on New Jersey at 1 Eastern, then Michigan battles New Orleans at 4. It all kicks off next Sunday on Fox and the Fox Sports app. 15 laps in, NASCAR Xfinity Series racing here at Charlotte Motor Speedway on board with Riley Herbst. He had a moment. This gets really tight off turn four. Carson Josefar up really high. Squeezes between the 98 and the wall. Great move there. It's but. it's really impressive, Michael, the, the, the speed that Carson Josefar has, whether it's in the trucks or the Xfinity car. I mean, the one thing for him, it's more about just kind of managing all the competitors because he has a knack for making other drivers mad. That's because of his, he runs at about 10 out of 10 every <laughs> lap of the every race. Lap. And you love that as a... As a fan, I, I am shocked that the drivers are not complaining about the moisture. When you look at this in car from Riley Herbst, they're having to clean that off constantly because of the, the buildup that is that is on this. But we haven't heard any complaints from any of the drivers right now about the track being wet, even even though you see Riley has his hands full right now in turns three and four. Look at this Four. battle for the lead. It's been heating up recently. Up high goes Gibbs. Well, and he's going to have to get to the outside of, of the seven car. He, he tried to work the bottom. Justin moved up, got in that traction compound, and found a little bit of speed. And I thought that was interesting because I talked to Justin earlier today, and he thought his strong suit, based on what he saw on Friday, was that he could run the bottom longer than others. But as Ty Gibbs tracked him down, he saw where he was running, and he moved up just one lane. But Ty's going to have to try to get to the outside of him in order to pass him. I don't think he'll be able to complete that on the bottom. And look what's ahead. Lap traffic. How will this play out? Right to the bottom goes Garrett Smithley and out of the way. Well, those guys will be screaming for all that lap traffic to go to the bottom, knowing that they want to be a little bit higher on the track. And we've got a competition caution that's just over a lap away, a couple of laps before we'll see it. And so that could change the way things play out here as well, because Gibbs is right there. He's bulldogging him and not going away. And what's amazing is you look at the Delta, John Hunter Nemechek's four seconds behind him, right? I mean, these two have absolutely checked out. Well, you had to figure John Hunter Nemechek was one of our favorites as well, along with these two, Allgaier and Gibbs. So uh, that competition caution might be just what John Hunter is looking for, make an adjustment, get this car handling a little bit better. Well, and the fact that they've given them an extra set of tires because of that comp co competition caution, that, that's a game changer for this series because they're normally so limited on tires that they don't get to make all of those adjustments. So when you do get to make one, you have to make sure you make the right decision. Carson Hosevar, right of your screen in the 77. Man, has he been impressive early. Gets by Brandon Jones for ninth, and there is the competition caution. Brandon Jones is thinking, uh, let's just have a normal day. Run inside the top ten. Make something good happen today. They've had a tough start to this season. Likely pit stops when we come back. Justin Allgaier is leading this thing. Back at Charlotte, pit road is open. Everybody coming down to get that first set of tires, Regan. 
Adam the double zero, Cole Custer running right now in fourth where he started. That car is tight landing for him. Just a little bit too free on exit. Wants an adjustment for the exit. And the leader of the number seven car, Justin Algar, he's too free early on into the corners and lay exit in the corners. Wants some right rear security right now. Josh? Well, for the 19 of Ty Gibbs, that he's a touch too tight on entry and center, then free on exit, complaining about the rain on the windshield for him. Same deal with John Hunter Nemechek. Told the team, I don't know what to tell you. I fired up way too tight. So some struggles for the 20 guys. Race off pit road. Look at him back oh. there. Mid pack. Three wide pushing and shoving. All guy was a part of that. That was tight. It was tight. Could have seen a little fender damage there. Ryan Sieg did stay on the racetrack. Free pass goes to Blaine Perkins. Here's what we're talking about. All guy Cole Custer, Sheldon Creed. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway with Michael Waltrip, Jamie McMurray. I'm Adam Alexander, Pit Road Today, Regan Smith, Josh Sims. We're under caution, and this was a scheduled competition caution by NASCAR because of all the rain we've had here the last couple of days. So the track was green, 
and everything was going to plan and then we got that missed and it picked up. We actually delayed the start of the race even today by a couple of laps because of that mist and now you can see NASCAR said let's pull them down pit road and work on the racetrack. The mist just got a little too heavy and you could really see that precipitation building up on the windshield of these cars and the track feeling the impact as well. It, it was shocking to me that, that the drivers weren't complaining about that, but I think like everyone watching at home, anyone that's been at the racetrack for the last few days, we're all trying to get it in. Everyone's like, nope, it's fine. It's not going to be a problem. But once they slow down, it just you could see the track change colors. And, and as you look at that in-car camera, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily raining. It's just still that kind of heavy mist right now. It was the heaviest mist I ever felt yesterday. It just felt thick in the air, and today uh, that's returned for a bit. You know, you mentioned it, Adam. Ryan Seek stayed out uh, under that competition caution. He had driven from last to 20th, so that's a fast number 39. So take a break here. Uh, enjoy leading this race while the showers persist. Well, and you go back to there's a baseline there because you can compare him to the other drivers that dropped to the rear among them. Josh Berry, who won this race last year, and he was in front of Josh of those drivers coming from the back. So not only did he make up a bunch of positions in that first run of the race, but he was better than some of those other cars that started back there. I just, I, I don't, I don't quite understand the strategy there. If you've got a car that's that good, don't get off sequence with the leaders right now. It's early in the race. Stay on there. Try to try to build up just being on that same sequence. If we get a long, longer run here, um, it's just going to get you behind. The racing here at Charlotte is always good. And then maybe you had a little mist and it slickens things up and it really gets entertaining. But what we saw early on, there were some moments, huh? Yeah, you see, we, we talked about Carson Hosovar running the top, John Hunter Nemechek, he had a couple of big moments right there. There was a clip from Sheldon Creed to the back of Moffitt as Moffitt went for a slide. Moffitt's been the guy that's really kept that high line swept off. And what you know, Michael, what, what you don't know is that the, the, the track is green. We haven't run on it. It's kind of missing. And from from inside the car, you're like, is my balance just this far off or is it because it's because the track's wet right now? A lot of unknowns for all those guys out there. Yeah, a couple of guys said their cars were feeling sketchy and they're wondering, like Jamie said, is it the weather? Yeah. Is, it, is, is it is it my us? car? Is it us or is it the weather? And then you you go on board here with Sammy Smith and you think about it from his perspective, he's never been here. In fact, he's got limited experience at mile and a half in general in the Xfinity series. So this is totally new for him. Sammy's there beating at 106. What are you, Jamie, you know right now? No, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I want to play along, but I don't know. You know, Adam, we, we were down in the garage earlier talking and Everyone just has so many positive things to say about Sammy Smith and, and his learning curve and how he's just like a sponge right now. Let's ask him about that. You better hurry up. <laughs> hey, hey, Sammy, before you take your radio off, can you hear me? It's Waltrip and the Fox guys. Yeah, 10 for I got oh. <laughs> He's like, closely. damn, I almost Under got the away. Wire. <laughs> uh, heart rate at 108. Uh, I would have assumed it would have been more when you're out there running, but uh, how did the rain feel and how – how much anxiety did that cause you as you're racing out there? Yeah, those last couple laps started to get pretty slick. Um, I thought we were making pretty good progress, and then the picker had a really good stop there to get us get some drive position. So disappointed we uh, can't get going here, but hopefully it clears up. We're hoping the same. Um, up to 116 now talking to me. I guess that's pretty anxiety felt also, huh? Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous talking to you, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I appreciate your time. We'll uh, have a bit of a break here and go back to racing. Thank you. Yep, thanks, guys. I get nervous every time I talk to you on TV, too. <laughs> but but it's totally different than what he's talking about. Adam, uh, I think I saw cars on the racetrack, which is a very good sign um, as we get ready to, to maybe get this thing started again. Back to you, Jamie and Michael. Thank you so much, Shannon. I want to go back to what Larry was talking about and Justin Allgaier. He's won 19 times in his career. He's never won here at Charlotte. And I asked him about boxes he wants to check. He's never won at Daytona, Talladega. I know he would love to win here. He said, I, I want to get up north of 24 wins because that's how many career wins Dale Jr. had, the boss man. I want to <laughs> pass him. I said, that would be a fun trophy to deliver on Monday morning, would it not? There's you, that you guys can add seven. if you want. I'm just throwing it out there. I'll tell you what I'm going to add, Adam. <laughs> I want to dial up the 39 of Ryan Sieg. He's leading this race. Get a report what the track's looking like. Ryan Sieg, Michael Waltrip, and the Fox team. Do you copy, buddy? 
Gotcha, Mikey. Well, I got a couple of questions. First of all, how's the track looking? How do you feel about going back racing? You can answer that. And then the second one, what's the strategy here? What's your plan to uh, to be able to win this race today? Uh, yeah, the track is uh, much better. I was a little worried the last, uh, uh, when I was in the lead last time, but uh, much better now. And uh, the strategy, we're just trying to get the track position to put ourselves farther forward right here and try to hopefully uh, win the race here, maybe a rain short race. Uh, here at Charlotte, so that's our strategy for our CMR Ford Mustang, just trying to trying to get some track position and get up around here and see where we stack up against everyone else since we had an engine issue in practice, so just uh, looking forward to getting going here. So yeah, I want to say hello to my daughter. She broke her, broke her arm yesterday at, uh, on her trampoline at home, so she had surgery this morning. Hopefully she's doing better. Oh, that's sad. I'm glad you got to say a hello to her. Love the family team. Love what y'all do. You were 39th at the start, 19th in the middle. Now you're, you're first. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you. We're going to get the one to go next time around. Justin Allgaier sixth right now. What do you think about the track? NASCAR's asking. I think the track's fine. I mean, at this point, it's still better than it was when we were under green. So why not go? That's the attitude. Let's go. Chandler Smith, eighth as we prepare for the restart. Uh, I got a fuel pickup issue, but I'm in the banking and I go weak to the right and I try to press the throttle. It's not picking up the fuel. Well, that's interesting because the, the tank's full, so I wouldn't the, the banking shouldn't affect that, that pickup at all. And I would say if, if he's having a problem, it's something other than, than a pickup issue right now. Are we coming to one to go, Adam? One to go, which means the choose. And we're going to have about 15 laps to go in the stage. And I'm really anxious to see how all these strategies play out because, you know, you can get 15 laps on these tires. Do you stay out at the end of the stage and, and go on the same tires you used at the competition caution? How do you handle this? Well, and, and everyone's going to see how Ryan Sieg performs on these 20-lap tires. If, if he's able to hang on, even if he can just hang on to the top five, it's going to change the strategy, I think, of what some of the crew chiefs see on pit road. Look, historically, Charlotte, when it's a green racetrack like we had, it wears tires out for the first first couple of stops. So I would think he's going to have a hard time hanging on, but but you just never know. I like the fact he chose the outside, though. If he can get a good initial start, a good launch uh, on those older tires, I think the outside is going to be the preferred lane being in that traction compound in turns <laughs> one and two. You know, no, no matter what, everybody's going to hear, well, the 39 faded. Yeah. Or the 39, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's building confidence in your driver when you try to sell them your plan for strategy. It's interesting to see Cole Custer, they elected to stay out. You know, he, he said during that rain delay that he thought they might have to come down for that crush panel rubbing. We'll have to pay attention to that, see if we see any smoke out of the double zero car. But he's definitely one of the cars that's going to contend to, to win this race. And, and they've taken a little bit of a risk here probably staying out. Yeah, and, and that's interesting, too. I'm sure the crew were able to get a good eyeball on that car and see what they exactly needed to do, and they felt like it was okay. Don't want to give up that track position. John Hunter Nemechek won the race off pit road. He's inside of our race leader, the control car, Ryan Sieg, row two, Ty Gibbs, Cole Custer, Creed Allgaier, row three. We're back under the green flag at Charlotte. Well, those guys knew Ryan was on old tires, did not want to mess with him. Cole Custer was able to get to his inside. He just wanted to push, and he didn't get it. He yeah, got and, and if you're Cole Custer, you can't push him because he's spinning the tires so bad. So all those crew chiefs now have made their decision <laughs> that they will be putting tires on the stage break. You can see the 39 is settled in there on the outside, about 10th position. A big slip there by Custer on the outside. Getting a report there is a tire up for the double zero Cole Custer. See if we can see any smoke. 11's got the rub. I think you're fine. The 11 definitely has a rub. I see a little bit now. I yeah. did see a little bit on. I mean, there's a little bit of a rub there, guys, but if that doesn't get worse, I, I'm not overly concerned. We saw in practice Parker Kligram and some of those other cars had, had pretty big ti uh, tire rubs and didn't seem to affect the car. Oh, there's a big slip by C. He's up in front of the line on the outside as Kaz Grala in the 26 goes by and three wide behind them. 
Yeah, and just two laps, he's went from being the leader, Ryan Sieg, back to 12th. Um, so, yeah, tires just really important at the start of the race here. You mentioned Cash Grala. Boy, he's having a, a good day. They were really bad in practice, not great in qualifying, drove right up inside the top 20, being scored 11th right now is the 26. Chandler Smith trying to work the bottom of the racetrack on Custer. Yeah, and the one thing that the double zero is going to be able to do is when they come in and put tires on here in a little bit, they'll be able to look at that tire. Because if it's rubbing on the tread of the tire, that's not near as big of a deal as if it's on the sidewall of the tire. So they'll be able to evaluate how bad is that rub and if they need to come in and work on it again after the pit stop. 21 is Austin Hill. He's been quiet today, really quiet all weekend long. Back-to-back fourth-place finishes for the driver that's won three times this year. Yeah, and you know, Adam, you talked about some guys having good good turns one and two and qualifying in a bad three and four. He was on the pole by two or three tenths heading into turn three, got really tight on the exit. We know that he was able to win at Vegas earlier this year on a mile-and-a-half track. He definitely is one of those guys that you got to keep your eye on today. But <laughs> Michael, look at Brett Moffitt. I I've, mean, all race long, right around the top, and has been able to make that work for him. I've had my eye on him since the beginning, <laughs> and right behind him is Josh Berry. Josh closing into the top. They're lined up up there, no hole in between. Into that top line as well. Yeah, the, the one thing right here that you see out Brett Moffitt's uh, front windshield is that Riley Herbst moved up in front of him. That's going to make it a lot more difficult for him. We check out our Toyota top performers. They're one, two. Drivers from Joe Gibbs Racing, Nima Check leading Gibbs. Sammy Smith from 18th to 12th, and saw the rest of the lineup there. Not a bad day for the guys from Sam Hunt Racing. Sheldon Creed electing to try that high side as Justin Allgaier closes in. Yeah, and one thing to watch, guys, is, is when you see, like we watch Justin Allgaier as he enters the corner, one and two, but mainly into turn and three, you know he's driving the car hard, and when he's able to stay on that white and blue line and not slide up, like right there, he's able to see, he slid up just a little bit. Once you slide up just that little bit, you have to roll out of the gas, and he was committed to trying to slide up in front of Sheldon Creed in that corner, but it's so important to keep that left front, your left side's on that line. What about Justin? He said, I did all that work and passed you, and now you're going to make me do it all over again. You <laughs> crossed them right back over in the Xfinity Series. Heck and all, oh, that's close. And all of NASCAR, these guys just charge every lap. Yeah, and, and you know, Justin, we saw the frustration. He felt like he had made a mistake uh, on pit road, so he's doing everything he can to get back to the front. Look, this is a very similar battle as we saw with Allgaier and Ty Gibbs earlier. Ty Gibbs has what appears to be the best car today. He's been able to track the leader down now twice. But it's about figuring out how to make that pass. He's trying to make it on the bottom, but as that leader moves up and gets into the traction compound, it's so hard to complete that. I think what he's going to have to do is figure out how to enter higher on the entry to the corner and just run a, an overall higher line around the track. John Hunter's leaving him just a little bit on the outside. To me, I would start working that outside groove and seeing if I could get to the right rear quarter panel. And you know this, Jamie. The spotter says, take his air away. He's running up, make some ground. You go up there. These drivers are just constantly in communication with their spotters and their team to understand who's running where and how to best take advantage of the other drivers. Yeah, I mean, it's where your spotter comes into play. You're looking out of your rearview mirror, and you're wanting verification from that spotter of, of what you see out of the mirror. Is that exactly what he's seeing from the top? And as you say, Kind of driving out of the back of the car, just trying to take air away. Five laps to go on the stage. Teammates racing for position. The nine, Brandon Jones. The one, Sam Mayer. Josh Berry continues the climb. What about Daniel Hemrick up in the third spot? Having a good run here. He's a sleeper at Charlotte. Second here a couple of years ago. Led a bunch of laps. I think it was 2021, his championship year, when you felt like he was going to win this race. Watch this crossover. Josh Berry sees what Riley Herbst is doing and says, I'll take it on the low side. Yeah, they've been battling back and forth. Josh Berry, obviously won here last year. He's really good at giving up a little bit on entry. He's going to give up a little bit of speed on entry, but now he's able to get back to the gas right there, drive right around the outside of the corner on the top side of the racetrack and has all the momentum down the straightaway now. There's Carson Hosevar in that 77, up 10 spots since the restart. So he's doing a nice job again today. He's going to try to slip inside of Herbst. Yeah, now this is a much harder pass to complete because Riley, to me, is in the preferred lane. You're going to see he has the momentum on the exit of the corner. With Riley running that top of the racetrack, it's really hard to come. Oh, we got a pass to the lead right there. It looks like John Hunter actually slipped up running that outside group. Maybe the balance a little bit loose, but got a little too aggressive. Lost some momentum, and Ty Gibbs was able to get back by. Coming to two to go on the stage, and it's Ty Gibbs who 
jumps to the lead. Oh, you oh, see? Brush the wall. Yeah, he hit that bump into turn one when the car landed, got into the wall a little bit. But you know what? The, the thing about these cars, and we talk about it every week on here, is because of that composite body, you just don't see a tire rub now. As long as there's no suspension damage, which I don't know that he hit hard enough to have that, that car is going to be just fine. But Nemechek running for the championship. He wants all those points he can get, whether you're talking about winning the <laughs> stage or getting another playoff point. And uh, he's got four stage wins this year, but it looks like he's going to come up short in stage one at Charlotte. Allgaier goes back by Hemrick as they continue to race for third. Final lap, first stage at Charlotte. Ty Gibbs leads. How many crossovers have we seen already? I mean, they take advantage of that run off. Yeah, the, the track for not having any rubber on it and having to have this break with, with, with the rain, the track is extremely racy early on right now. When Ty Gibbs won the championship last year, he won 10 stages. He won in his first Charlotte start in Xfinity competition two years ago. Good start to the day for the 19. Running 900 miles, and he wins stage one. Does Ty Gibbs. Second to his teammate, John Hunter Nemechek. Allgaier, Henrik Freed, the top five. Good points for Chandler Smith. Austin Hill, who came in second in the championship, is seventh. Barry from the back to eighth. Cole Custer settles ninth, and Riley Herps gets that last stage point. Cole Custer was really into that caution, Adam. They're going to come in and check that double zero car out. He had fallen back somewhat. Ty Gibbs, your Charlotte leader, picking up his 14th career stage win. Stage one complete for the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Charlotte. Ty Gibbs gets the win over his teammate John Hunter Nemechek. Pace car driver's been busy today. That's the all-new Toyota GR Supra leading the field. Truex gave me a ride around the Roval, actually, in that car. I'll never get in one of those again. With he, him. He, he thought it was just the funniest <laughs> thing to scare me, and I had, saw no humor in it at all. 
I think he had just woke up. It was around noon. I asked for a ride at Coda a couple of years ago, first time we went yeah. there. I said, could we get a pace car ride just to see the place, get a feel for it? And they said, sure. And then I went down after practice, and they handed me the keys. I said, no, oh, I don't want to drive. I, and I drove. <laughs> oh, and, no. And then I... I got a little confidence, and I came down the front <laughs> straight away to the big hill, and on the radio that was sitting in the car, they said, slow it down in the pace car. <laughs> I thought for sure my hard card was going to be taken away. Uh, the mist is back, and so they're going to bring the cars down pit road and put the jet oh. fryers back out there. What a frustrating couple of days this has been. There's the damage to the 20 of John Hunter. Minimal, I think. They'll get a chance to survey it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if his steering wheel's off, because that's the, the tell sign, right? If you bent anything in the front, the, the back will probably be okay. We're hearing the drivers are going to stay in their cars. At least that is the plan as of now. And, and NASCAR and the track feel like it's going to take them about 10 minutes to run the jet dryers around and get this racing facility where it needs to be. And you go bigger picture with this, this rain delay and the pushing the race from Saturday to Monday comes at a really bad time for teams because next up, two races on the West Coast. I mean, in five days, they're racing in Portland on the road course and then going from there, Hollywood helping keep our camera Hollywood, in good working condition. Well, the good news is, Adam, next week at Portland, if it does rain. <laughs> well, we're okay there in the we're rain. We're going to race in it, yeah. And we it found, most likely is going to. We found out last year oh, that you can race in the rain. I don't think it ever stopped. In Portland. Doubled up on pit road. Take a break here, see if we can catch a break with the weather. Mention the importance of points. Two names that jump out to me, Nemechek, who's second. We talked about him, Austin Hill, who gets four points down there. They came in with only one point separating them when you look at the regular season standings. So everything they do from now to the end of the regular season is going to be huge as they try to become the regular season champion and get those 15 playoff points. Josh Berry from the back up to score some stage points there. Hey, and Sheldon Creed, we were talking about this during practice the other day, but if you look at where he was points-wise a year ago through 11 races compared to now, this is a group that has made major improvements. They're well above the cut line, and getting stage points once again here today. Nice work by the two. Red flag is out. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Shannon and the fellas will have the ball from the studio. Hopefully we'll be racing again soon from Charlotte. There it is. Live look, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Great to have you with us on FS2. It's part two of our NASCAR doubleheader at CMS that originally was part one. Great to have you with us on this Monday evening with Michael Waltrip, Jamie McMurray. I'm Adam Alexander. We went green shortly after 11 a.m. local time. Mother Nature had other plans. What a crazy weekend this has been, huh? It's been just a long weekend for everybody. Glad we finally got the cup rates in, but plenty of action in the 48 laps that we got to run earlier today, Michael. And plenty of action on pit road. Justin Allgaier gets squeezed there on pit road. And what I saw out on the track, Jamie, during that first run is people didn't know if their cars were loose or the track was wet. And it could have been a combination of both. These guys went through some real adverse conditions. You can see John Hunter Nemechek leading that first stage late. He gets in the outside wall, allowing Ty Gibbs to slide by. And then here comes the rain. We thought we were going to be OK, got through that opening stage, and then the rains came again. We had to shut down things, give way to the Coke 600. So here is our race summary as the engines have fired and the cars roll off the pit lane. You saw Ty Gibbs gets the win in stage one with that late pass of his teammate, John Hunter Nemechek. Justin Allgaier started on the pole, led those first 21 laps prior to the competition caution. He is third right now after those problems on pit road. The race, as we said, suspended at the end of that opening stage. And we've had four different start times. The original, 1 o'clock <laughs> Eastern Saturday. We pulled it back to noon to beat the weather. And uh, here we are once again, late into the night. Monday night NASCAR. Welcome in, everybody. So what do we expect now? We've got roughly 150 laps to go in this thing. You've got a bunch of confident race car drivers down behind those wheels. They know the track is perfect. They watch the cup guys go three, four wide, racing from the apron all the way up to the outside wall. So I think we're going to see a barn burner. I think there's going to be a lot of action. Josh Berry's biggest mover in that first little stint there went from the back all the way up inside the top 15. So good move for him. Looking 
looking forward to see seeing how they come off pit road. And let's go racing, Jamie. Yeah, and Michael mentioned that earlier the guys didn't know when they were sliding around if it was because of the balance of their car or was it because of the moisture on the racetrack. Well, the track's completely different now. We've got 600 miles of cup racing on it, lots of rubber laid down. So it's going to be interesting to see who can make the right changes to their car for these new conditions. It's it's so great that Ty Gibbs is leading this race, and I know he didn't get the finish he wanted oh, in the had a Coke good run going, though. but boy, did he put on a show in his first ever marathon night in NASCAR. That 54 was strong earlier this evening. And what about our old booth mate, Blaney? Gets yeah. the big W in the Coke 600. Congratulations to Roger Penske pulling off the double. History. Yeah, it was yeah. incredible to win both of those in the same weekend. And to Blaney for breaking that massive losing streak he was on, right? 59 races. Yeah. That, that's no winless streak. You know that. <laughs> Here are the numbers on Ty Gibbs. Well, he's really good when it comes to racing on the intermediates. One here in his first ever start a couple of years ago uh, on a mile and a half in the Xfinity Series. Got it done right here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He's just been so fun to watch since he came Xfinity racing with that first race down in Daytona. Like, where is this coming from? And he's just been that good ever since. Yeah, he showed up. Little expectation on a road course at Daytona and goes out and beats some of the best late in that race to win it. And the star was born, wins the championship last year in his first year full time and now going for rookie of the year in the Cup Series. Yeah, and I just imagine as he signed up for this weekend that he thought, well, I'll run the Xfinity race and then go run the Cup race the following day. To do it in reverse order and both in the same day, Michael, that is that is quite a feat for that young man. I guarantee you, though, he's ready to go and smile and he thinks, I'm going to put that uh, 600 in my rearview mirror and go win me a trophy. This is what's unbelievable about his two starts here. 2021, he has that spin, comes back, and gets the victory. And that was a wild afternoon. I remember sitting up here in the booth. It was a driver's only broadcast. So he wins. And I think I'm right in saying he's the younger, youngest Xfinity winner ever at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Last year, he comes back here, has a problem, finished second. So. He, he pretty much has this place figured out in an Xfinity car. Yeah, and it's been so interesting to me with Ty Gibbs because last year, lots of controversy. It seemed like every time he'd win a race, somebody was mad at him for that. This year in the Cup Series, though, he's done a really good job of, of staying out of trouble and not being the story every week, but also still getting really good finishes. That number 20 Mobile One Toyota of John Hunter has the side scraped off of it. He slid up in the outside wall, as we saw in our highlights earlier. So uh, the team will probably pull on a fender or see what they've got there when they come to pit road. Be interesting to see how this pit stop goes down for this team. Yeah, and for you know he he had that you know incident right before the rain came at the end of stage one. You know the crew guys have looked that thing over up and down. They have a really good plan of what they're going to need to do here. But much like in the Cup Series, because of the composite bodies, it's it's just a game changer for when you get into the wall. That body seems to pop back out, and we just don't see the tire rubs you have in the past. There are a few drivers you need to keep an eye on when they come down pit road for this cycle of stops, which will be the first time they've come down for service since they did it at the competition caution just past lap 20. You got Nemechek in the damage there. Sheldon Creed had contact with Cole Custer and Justin Allgaier. And we heard during our red flag coverage way back around noon Eastern time, you know, Cole Custer said we're concerned. Obviously, they've ran some laps since then. They'll try to figure this thing out. But those are the drivers we probably need to keep an eye on if there would need to be any type of damage repair. Yeah, and the one thing about Cole Custer is that we saw there was a little rub. We saw a little bit of smoke. But depending on where that crush panel is rubbing on the tire, and they're going to be able to see that when they make this pit stop, they'll know if they need to come back in and address that again. Probably just go for it on this pit stop and then evaluate how the 100%, tires yeah. look when they take them off. Regan Smith, Josh Sims, also doing double duty on pit road. Let's uh -huh. go to Regan. Here they are. Adam, when we left off the 11 car, Daniel Hemrick, he needed some side bite. He also needed to be a little bit tighter on entry with his car. Not really sure, though, where the track's going to go right now in terms of adjustments that they need to make. He thinks it's going to be worse whatever he's fighting earlier in the night. And Justin Allgaier, he was too loose on, or excuse me, too tight on entry and exit, but he was already too tight in the middle, so he's not sure how they're going to get that fixed either. Josh? Well, a long day for Ty Gibbs of the 19 car. Goes from Xfinity to Cup back to Xfinity. Happy with that car earlier. We'll see if it stays that way in terms of the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. He brushed the wall earlier during stage one. They had to pull up the right fender to fix that car up and give him four tires and fuel. The number one pit stall has been enormous this weekend. Nemechek did not get the win off pit road there, but a lot of that was because it looked like they were pulling on that fender. He comes off second to his teammate, Ty Gibbs. 
You think Ty would want to have a chat with us? I think he's got to be feeling good about life right now. I do, too. Hey, Ty Gibbs, Michael Waltrip, and the Fox team. Do you copy, bud? Yes. It's been a long night. I know. I hope you got a second to tell us how you're feeling, and uh, are you ready to go attack the rest of this Xfinity race? Yeah, I think we've got a very fast can't, or, uh, super here. Just got to make the best of it. The Greek run a couple hours ago got taken out, so just got to keep rolling there. All right, buddy. Go get him. He well, almost said Camry because yeah. he's used to driving <laughs> yeah, the right. cup car. Yeah. He's in the Super now. Well, you can tell he's frustrated, right? He had that. We talked about it. A great night going in the Coke 600 and got caught up in someone else's accident. So a little frustrated here, but I'll promise you if he gets out to the lead here, he'll forget about that. And, and if he can get a win tonight, he'll definitely will. Talked about the drivers to watch coming down pit road, maybe spending some extra time. Cole Custer did. Uh, he's he's going to fall way back here, and we'll watch his progress as we begin our second stage. Some of the guys pitting now uh, a lap around. Um, Stefan Parsons, you see the black car with the hood up. He was having problems getting his throttle wide open, so they took taking this opportunity to try to get that squared away. Had a pretty optimistic about his chances here at Charlotte. Had a good opening few laps, but then the, the trouble started, so we'll see if they can get that squared. Other guys making some adjustments as they come down pit road. Justin Allgaier being shown in the fourth position, led 21 laps early. But I was below the lights. I don't know. I don't know what happened right there, but I, I hit like a whole row of lights before I actually hit my lights. I'm really mad right now. Okay. All right, what happened? Got to get up. He called you up. Got to get up. Copy. Well, it sounds like they're, you know, a little frustrated with Justin because he didn't get out of the lane to, you know, to, to block essentially as he was getting up to speed um, but look it's been a long day for everybody that's not going to be the last bit of frustrations we hear Jim Pullman's obviously a little frustrated but just part of it right Michael yeah we're in great moods though aren't we, we are we, we sound way more excited than anyone on the radio we, so far we, we've been out there yeah. and in circumstances like that it feels so good to be yeah. here on Fox you know and so much bringing different. the race to the people at home and Having some fun here. What was going on with that uh, radio there, Regan? Well, hey, guys, I'm still in a good mood down on here. Pit, uh, pit road. <laughs> Just so you know, everything's happy where I'm standing. The seven car, though, what happened was he was felt there. The team felt like he should have been ahead of the 11 car as they went down pit road because he didn't get to the lights in time. They gave up that position. The 11 drove past him as they went further down pit road. And just to update the double zero of Cole Custer, you guys mentioned that left rear fender, a slow pit stop for him because they did have to take some extra time to fix the fender as we see Justin leaving pit road right now. And that was all about the lights on the dash, not getting his speed as quickly as he needed to. And that's what was frustrated, frustrated the crew. And, and Jamie, you know how important it is to, to do everything you can as a driver to take care of those pit crew guys so they can shine and show how good they are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, it's so much easier to pass on pit road versus on the racetrack. So you're trying to get all you can. Well, we talked about the importance of that number one pit stall. John Hunter Nemechek has it after winning the pole at Darlington. It, Look at him working on that right side. Yeah, and that fender's real. I saw him pull on that, and it's really soft. You saw that it the, it actually broke away from where the, the fender meets the nose. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see. You see it split just a little bit there. They might try to get some bare bonders yeah. and tape on that the next stop, knowing uh, how flexible that was. And that's a big part of the handling here at Charlotte. You're running 180 miles an hour. You've got to have that fender up there for front downforce. Well, and what they're going to hope for is that it doesn't start flapping. Because when it starts flapping, that's when air gets underneath it, and you can see it cause an issue. If it doesn't do that, it's going to be okay. Penalties there for the four of Smithley, the 74 of Cram. They start at the rear. Free pass goes to Stefan Parsons, as we talked about. They were having carburetor issues. They'll make the change there under caution as we hit the choose and anticipation of the be beginning of our second stage. Ty Gibbs takes the outside. Yeah, not. I mean, not completely surprised by that. It, it, it did seem like in the cup race that that outside was a, a, a great lane, especially as you get down into turns one and two, they get up into the traction compound. Seems like the guy on the bottom's got his hands full, especially arrow wise, but also just because there's not quite as much grip on the bottom. We got some other fun things going on, Adam. Heart rate monitor. What do you Sammy think about Smith. That? Sammy Smith's going to give us what's going on inside his body. Now, if you've met him, you would say Sammy doesn't get really excited. He's pretty low key. But when you look at that heart rate monitor, we saw it during practice Friday. It got up like 165. When he qualified, I was a little disappointed. I thought he'd be on the chip. First time he's qualified at Charlotte, it was right around 130. And that's where he is right now. Looking forward to this restart. 
That thing should jack up when they go down. <laughs> My heart rate does when you go. I know setting in the booth it does because this gets so crazy on these restarts. They're going to be three wide for sure. It's funny you say that because I always wonder if fans at home get as excited on the restarts as, as what we do because we know what it's like to be in the car. Your adrenaline gets pumping. My heart starts racing when we get to all these restarts. I always wonder if that's a driver thing or if that's just in general. We'll follow the progress of Cole Custer restarting 33rd after they repaired the damage. Front row, teammates from Joe Gibbs Racing. Ty Gibbs, John Hunter Nemechek, and we'll follow the progress of their teammate via his heart rate monitor. We're back under green at Charlotte. And there's that three wide I talked about. Sheldon Creed getting with it in the outside lane. He's driving the two. That's a fast number two also. I think he's going to be tough today, tonight. I think they motivated all guy or seven pretty quick on a restart. Yeah, there's so much momentum on that outside lane. You see John Hunter's fighting back at the bottom of turns three and four. But when they get on the straightaway, the outside just tends to have all the momentum. And it's, it's a struggle for her on the bottom. Chandler Smith and Daniel Hemrick right up in there with those college cars. That's fast cars here early on. A little bit of smoke. We saw that earlier out of the 11. Yeah, we've seen that out of a few cars this weekend. It doesn't seem to be a concern, uh, and it does tend to go away after the air pressures build up. I'm, I'm not sure. Now, that looks a little bit more than what we've, we've seen in the past. He might have had a little bit of contact, Michael, with somebody. Nine is Brandon Jones coming outside of him. Teammate, the one, Sam Mayer, top five here a season ago. Brandon Jones looks loose down on the bottom. You see him slipping up the hill there. Riley Herps in that number 98 monster car pulling up on his tail, tail end. Yeah, Justin Haley, who's filling in for Kyle Busch, you see right there in the 10 car, complained a little bit about it's not his seat. You know, he and Kyle Busch are obviously aren't the same size. Same thing, though, another column car with the same tire up. So you, that makes you tend to think that it's almost a, a setup or a suspension, something that, that they've got going on because we don't see any of the other cars doing it. And these cars start with the air pressure a little bit lower, so there's more tire flex. And that's just how precise these cars are built. Those bodies are put right on those tires for aerodynamic purposes. So as soon as the tires come up, you see the smoke dissipates. Been a big day for Haley. Coming from the back, filling in for Kyle Busch. Ran the Coke 600, went the distance, top 15 finish there. Third Xfinity start of the year. This is the battle for third. You got a little Hemrick, you got a little Allgaier, the 7-11. Hemrick's strong, you see that smoke's going away. He's gonna make that pass on Allgaier, and we know how strong Justin is. Power move early by Daniel Hemrick. You see, Justin doesn't want to run in the wake of Hemrick. He's moved up into that traction compound. I'm going to say Justin's not happy with this car right now, though, because he was really good on the bottom on Friday in practice. Uh, he also mentioned that he thought that's where he had an advantage over some of these guys. So the fact that he's not able to run on that white and blue line, you see him trying to get down there right now, makes you think the handling's not. Ooh, it looks like he's loose. You see him sliding up right there. Handling's not where he wants it to be. Let's check in on Cole Custer. Restarted. Outside the top 30, after that damage repair, bottom left of your screen, biggest movers since the restart. He's plus 11 and trying to get some more, going after Parker Kligerman in the 48. And here it is, the Parker and Parker show. Kligerman in the 48, the 31 is Parker Retzloff, the rookie from Wisconsin. And Michael, we heard Parker Kligerman talk about his car before that rain delay. They thought they were really good around the top, but. Man, look at the speed of the double Z. We were able to drive in a little harder and still get cut through the middle better than uh, than he was. And we knew that was coming too, right? Is this a tire issue? What's going on with Hemrick? Hemrick was up to third. He's now falling back and going to make a pit stop. Flight down the loose wheel. Pit for it. Could be the left rear. Bring it to us when you need it. Bring uh -huh. it to us. You guys heard it on the radio right there. He came on the on the radio about a half a lap ago, said left rear is loose, left rear, rear is loose, had a wheel issue. Daniel Hemrick, left side's only on this stop. Well, and when you heard him say it could be the left rear, that's because Daniel was complaining, I might have a loose wheel. So immediately what happens in that pit box is the crew chief looks to the tire changers and you know, gives a thumbs up or a thumbs down. The rear tire changer definitely looked at him and said, hey, it might be the left rear. So when the driver says that and then the tire changer kind of verifies it, that's why you saw him come down pit road and not take a chance. 
Here's a driver that came in on the playoff cut line. 33 point advantage over Parker Kligerman who's on the outside looking in. Long way to go in the regular season but something to monitor for Clear a driver who's had a problem. Raja Karuth dives into Clear turn three. You love this circle.com on board, don't you, Michael? I, yeah, his uh, driver eye camera it just uh, makes my day. When I see the cars bouncing around and the driver in there wrestling with that car, that's what it's all about. We'll get to see some of that as this race goes on. He scored 27th, but uh, 26th actually is where he is in the running order after a solid run Friday night here in the Craftsman Truck Series. 20 of 45 complete in stage two. Ty Gibbs, your leader at Charlotte. Round 12 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's unofficially lasted like three days. Give it nine hours, 18 minutes, 52 seconds under the red flag from when we started the race earlier today and took that little halftime break for the Coke like, 600. That felt like Club Adam. Right Is that there. what it felt yeah. like? Techno that, thumping. Did you was, see me dancing yeah, over I here? Saw you, I saw you wiggling. <laughs> I like to watch you dance, Adam. You've got some nice moves. Well, let's not do the booth on camera now. I think we should keep it on track. <laughs> Jamie, you mentioned it. Is that right, fun, right front fender flapping around? And I don't see anything there. I think that car is in good shape. Yeah, I mean, I would feel really good about that. And I'm sure they're paying attention as, as we zoom in on that. I wouldn't be surprised, though, Michael, if they don't try to stick a piece of tape on that at the pit stop just to make sure that, that there's no issues. Because the one thing that can happen is when they go to put tires on is you yank that right front tire off, you can catch it, right, and tear it up even more. So they're probably going to try to get a piece of tape on that. But it looks to me like it's good to go. His lap times are, I mean, he's matching actually a little bit better than yeah. Ty Gibbs right now. So hasn't affected that car at all. He was the fastest car on the track, though. Oh, look at that little argument over space there. Carson Hosevar in the blue car. Sammy Smith, I bet his heart rate went up there because they had some uh, contact. You want young, talented drivers? Oh, yeah, look at that. That have no fear? 
Sammy Smith, Carson Hosevar. We're I, over 180 with the yeah, heart rate. I, I would say if we could check his blood pressure, <laughs> it would be pretty high right now. Well. That was a tight squeeze off turn four. Yeah, he's generated a pretty good run off the top of three and four, and it looked like Carson slid up in front of him. And, and Hosevar's car looks pretty loose, guys. You watch it. The back end is really dancing around through the middle of the corners. I mentioned Hosevar earlier today in our coverage and just how good he's been lately. Sixth driving in the Xfinity Series at Darlington. Watch this off turn four. This will elevate your heart rate. They get down the back straightaway. Big move to the inside by Hosevar. I think he's going to come up in front of Sammy. Yeah, I didn't see anything wrong with that right. No, I, mean, I don't either. I mean, Hosevar had plenty of room, and, and Sammy had to know that he was going to have a little bit of momentum uh, on Carson because he had run the bottom through that corner. Just behind them, don't look now, but the double zero is on the move, up to 14th since the restart, Regan. Adam, it's going well for him right now. He's cutting through the field pretty quick at the moment. Still not perfect with that race car earlier today when we started the race. He was tight landing, getting into the corner. Now that car has transitioned at this moment. He is loose into the corners. Needs some help with that right now. Well, he might be loose, but he's fast. And, and the one thing that, that he's getting right now is is a balance of his car in traffic, you know, and so you're able to work on that and, and kind of know what you're going to have on a restart. Um, and that's a big confidence builder to go to the back and to be able to drive up through them. See you see that run off turn two? Right now, yeah. He wrapped that high side and was able to really close in on Herbs. Look what he's done last five races compared to the first six. Those first six races, his only top ten finish was at Daytona. Since that time, they have been absolutely rolling. Average finish inside the top five. And hey, quick update, the driver he's racing with here, Daniel Hemrick in the 11, went one lap down after that unscheduled pit stop. He's 37th, and the third car in line one lap down, so he's not in a position to get that free pass should the caution come out. Hey, no. Adam, you talk about the slow start to the year for Cole Custer. I mean, he was the guy that I picked as the championship favorite heading in because he had the cup experience coming back. We know those cars are going to be fast, and it was a struggle at the beginning. Ran well at some of those races, just didn't finish well, but finally get it all pieced together, Michael. Yeah, and he's impressive, and he was my championship favorite for sure, and I think everything's heading in the right direction. You take him and John Hunter, I think that's the two that Justin Allgaier, Austin Hill. I know Austin Hill's won three times. Those are the two they got to keep their eye on for the long run. Here's a stat you won't believe. In this race a year ago, Joe Gibbs Racing failed to lead. I mean, that, that's just incredible. First time that had happened in 23 races. They have been in charge in this race tonight, even earlier today. Ty Gibbs out front of John Hunter Nemechek. It's a parade for JGR at Charlotte with 12 to go, stage two.
Inside of 10 laps to go, stage number two, Charlotte Motor Speedway for NASCAR's Xfinity Series with Michael Waltrip, Jamie McMurray. I'm Adam Alexander. Going to break, I was talking about Joe Gibbs Racing and the fact that they didn't lead a lap in this race a year ago. And, Jamie, you told me why during the commercial. There. Yeah, I watched the race back this morning to kind of get up to date here. It's because Junior Motorsports was first through fourth <laughs> for a lot of that race. I mean, it was incredible. All four of those cars were capable of winning. All four of them finished inside the top seven. They're all four in the top ten tonight, talking about the Chevrolets from Junior Motorsports, best of the bunch. Justin Allgaier in third. Barry just got to the top ten. He had been right around 11th, 12th. You know, we talked to Justin in the garage earlier, Adam, and asked him, you know, like, well, what do you think the difference is? Like, one year ago, you're, you're dominating these mile and a halfs and still running well tonight, but not the same performance. And he really couldn't pinpoint one thing of, of why he thought the organization was, was just a little bit off this year. You see Josh Berry back into the top 10. He's running ninth just ahead of Carson. Whoa. Carson didn't give that spot up. Down in the garage area again uh, yesterday, Jamie, and talking to Carson Hosfar, looked under the hood, it had a Hendrick engine un under the hood, a lot of JRM parts on that thing. So it's a really good race car, and this is a really talented young racer. I've had the privilege of following him in his career in the truck series and watching him win that big race down in Texas, but being so close to winning before that, then you knew it was just a matter of time. And uh, obviously, he's got what it takes behind the wheel to win at this level. And as I watch him, whether it's today or in the truck series, he's had a history of, of making a lot of other people mad. He's fast, but it's been hard to put the whole race together because he's, he's made some mistakes later in the races of, of making people mad. Uh, but that's clear. You, you kind of mentioned that's getting better. Three to go on the stage. Issues for the 25 of Brett Moffitt. Brett Moffitt was running the fence. He's been running as high or higher as we watch Cole yeah, Custer work his way in the top 10. He went to the bottom one, Barry. But you can see Brett's been in the outside wall. Custer slides underneath Barry, and then Barry back underneath the old crossover there off turn two. Yeah, Cole had a huge run, and just the top is, is so preferred right now. You see those guys all trying to get as high as they can. Look at how fast the double zeros can get back to the throttle. And it's can carry that momentum off the corner. That he is restarted impressive. outside the top 30 to begin our second stage. And we started it a little later than normal because of all the laps we ran after that red flag and everything. And here he is going to get a stage point if he can hang on. Yeah, and if this next stage goes green, seeing how good that double zero is on the long run, especially up against the wall, he, he's going to be a factor in this thing. Plus 21 in the stage for Cole Custer. Got the damage on pit road at our competition caution, but he has found the sweet spot. Final lap of the stage. Ty Gibbs won stage one right around noon Eastern time. <laughs> and here we are at 10 15 <laughs> on the East Coast, and he's going to sweep the stages, it would appear. 15th career stage victory for Ty Gibbs. He does it at Charlotte. It's only the second time in his career. Hard to believe that he swept stages in an Xfinity race. John Hunter Nemechek second as he was in stage one. All guy or Austin Hill Creed, the top five. Chandler Smith, Sam Mayer, Brandon Jones, Cole Custer, Carson Hosevar, the top ten. Long day for Ty Gibbs, but he's got plenty of adrenaline.
Memorial Day. The time to honor and remember our fallen heroes. And I think about those Gold Star families that lost a loved one fighting for our freedom. Here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, a doubleheader for NASCAR. Earlier the Coke 600, now the Xfinity Series Stage 2 complete and everyone on pit road. Regan. Adam, it's a different time of day, but still the same problems for Justin Allgaier. The middle tight with that car right now, but the entry and exit is very free. Said so the right rear just feels extremely stiff on his car. And the two car is Sheldon Creed. He's Creed. He started off free, moved up the racetrack some, and then he loses the whole car. Doesn't have any grip with it. Josh? Well, Ty Gibbs swept the stages, but his biggest concern, having trouble with the radio, they're going to take some extra time on pit road to change out the steering wheel, which will change out the radio system. And then as far as John Hunter Nemechek, he said, I need better turn, but don't un unhook the back, guys. That's big, big for Ty Gibbs and that team. He's going to go all the way to the back of the lead lap. I was going to say that his teammate wins the race off pit road over him, but there really was no race between teammates because of everything he had to deal with. So you're Cole Custer. You go from outside the top 30 to scoring stage points and on pit road plus three. Life is good for the double zero right now. Well, let's hit him up, see if he wants to talk. Hey, Cole, it's Jamie Mack up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Yep, I got you. Well, buddy, it has been fun to watch you rip around the top. Your car looks great. I know you had to go to the back, but you drove back up through there, had a great pit stop. You got a lot of time left. What do you think? You got you got enough car to get up and win this thing? Man, I mean, I think JT did a great job tuning this thing up, so I think we got a shot at it here. We obviously had not been around these guys yet, but it felt pretty good that last run, so hopefully keep it going here. Uh, it's been a long, long weekend, so hopefully end it on a high note. No, all right, man. Well, good luck. It's been fun to watch. The highs and lows of the pit lane. When he came down at lap 21, they had that contact. He had to make an extra stop earlier. He said, that really sucks, giving up <laughs> he did. all That's that track said. position. They give plus three here, and he'll be a player when we get the restart after the break.
Closing on the midway point for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Charlotte. This race is official, by the way, as we've wrapped up our second stage. There's the 48 of Parker Kligerman getting a push. They were penalized over the wall too soon. Let's find out what's going on here. Right now, uh, I mean, we just have to run until it breaks. It's either the fuel pump or the regulators. Can't get, any, can't get the fire. Something in the system, the fueling system, obviously a miss there. That, that is a long weekend to have your car car break at this point of night. Let's get a couple of updates on pit road, Josh. Hey yeah, guys, and just an update on what was going on with the 19. So the button was sticking, they felt like, because whenever he would try and talk over the radio, all they would hear was the sound of the engine. So when they came under caution, Ty came over the radio and said, we just need to change this thing out because it's annoying me too much. So that's why they took so much time on pit road to change out the steering wheel, which has the button, which he presses to talk over the radio. Regan? Well, a tough break for the 98 to Riley Herbst. You saw him right behind the 19 of Ty Gibbs there on the racetrack. He's going to have to restart in the back. They had to come back and put lug nuts on the left rear tire, unfortunately. It's interesting about Ty Gibbs' wheel because normally if the button is sticking in the car, you don't know that as a driver. They hear that on the pit box. So it's that's, a, that's an interesting comment that he made there. Well, he's got a really fast car. It'll be fun for us to watch him absolutely tear back through the field. But, you know, he, he's had a long day, had a great run in the Coke 600, and now problems here. But I'll tell you this, you see the stage points earned today, and those have big implications on our playoffs that are not too far out from here. Big for Daniel Hemmert got seven. Parker Kligerman in the garage gets none. They were right there at the cut line. Inside lane for John Hunter Nemechek on the restart. Outside, Sheldon Creed. Almost halfway home at Charlotte. Big push from Justin Allgaier to John Hunter on this restart, trying to get the, that outside lane cleared. You see it really has shot John Hunter out, out to the front. Oh, there comes the double zero, guys. Yeah, he's lurking. Look at that dive into turn three. That's where double zero has been so good down in this end of the corner, end of the track, and he's able to hold it down low and make moves. Well, and what, what I think is impressive about his car is that we thought he was the best car in the long run, and it looks to me like it takes off really good on the restarts as well. So great, great car this weekend for Cole Custer. Three wide behind him. Brandon Jones looking to the outside and thought better of it. Austin Hill took that space away. Now Austin comes up, gives a shove to his teammate, Sheldon Creed, who's fighting for that spot with a double zero of Cole Custer. They're all racing for third. Yeah, and I, I know that he was trying to help his teammate right there, but he actually gave that shove a little late into the corner, maybe got Sheldon Creed a little bit loose. You see Cole Custer was able to clear them in three and four. It'd be interesting to see if he can track down these top two guys now. The top two guys ran about the same time on the speedway, a couple of tenths faster than Cole, but Cole was passing people making that kind of time on the track. As you see, Josh Berry dive down low into turn three. Berry has complained about his car all weekend about being too loose in, too loose off, and not turning the middle. And as we heard Regan uh, report down on pit road, just all guys are starting to complain about the same thing. So a little bit of work to do to those JRM cars to get them back up to the speed of some of these other guys. That being said, Barry's up to eighth after, after well, starting they're in the they're not terrible. They're just not as good as what we were accustomed to seeing. I mean, they dominated this race one year ago. I just wouldn't want to race with Barry because he's that driver. You ride him off, and you're like, okay, I don't have to worry about him anymore. And then you get to the final quarter of the race, and you're like, what? how did he get back he up here? From? We've seen it all year long, and right now he's knocking on the door of the top five as he goes to the inside of Sheldon Creed. That is for fifth. I think he's going to bang that door down, Adam, and take that fifth spot. So good. Wrapping the bottom. That's what the cars want to do. These drivers talk about wrapping the bottom, and that's what he's able to do there is he doesn't quite have the speed to clear Creed in the two car. Won't be long before they've got company coming from behind in the form of Ty Gibbs. I looked up and he was top 15 already since the restart. He's plus 10, being scored 11. Man, that Toyota's fast. Sometimes as a driver and you got a long day and you've had some frustrations, you just want to go take it out on the car. You know, you want to show everybody that you can do it no matter what the situation is. Overcoming that steering wheel issue already and up inside. He's earning the 11th position just outside the top 10. Yeah, and you know, 
one thing that I think we need to, to talk about here is that it's been a really long day for, for the drivers, the crews. You could see some mistakes here. Everybody, I mean, we're exhausted up the TV booth. We haven't really done anything all day long. So it's been a really long day for all these guys. And I think that you'll see some frustrations as this race goes on. But boy, that, that 19 car, man, he can run the bottom, roll around the white line. Lots of speed in Ty Gibbs' car tonight. We're talking about a long day for a lot of people. Let me give a special salute to all the folks, the men and women here at NASCAR on Fox. They, they do an incredible job. Many of them will break down our operation tonight and go straight to St. Louis for next weekend. So we thank everybody for the long day and the hard work as Ty Gibbs slides up in front of Mayer. Mayer, a little crossover. It gets harder and harder to pass cars the closer you get to the front, <laughs> doesn't it? Oh, it does. And, and there's there's no love loss between those two. They definitely have had their their share of, uh, of on-track battles throughout oh, their yeah. whole career. But you think about it, even in the Xfinity Series, you see Ty Gibbs trying to shut down in front of him and, and take some air away from, from Sam Mayer right there and get that pass completed. We've reached the final stage for the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Charlotte. John Hunter Nemechek, your leader. Allgaier, Custer, Jones, and Creed, the top five. Eighth to 11th on track, separated by that much. And hey, Carson Hosevar has snuck up on this group. 77 had a 30-second pit stop on that last cycle, but he's been able to regain some track position. There he is right behind Sammy Smith. This has been very entertaining. Well, it's, it's getting interesting. Michael and I have been watching this. That, that battle with Chandler Smith and Ty Gibbs, it is has been a little bit heated uh, the last few laps. And, then, and Sammy Smith came up short in that because of, of what was going on. Now he's got damage to the left front. He and Sam Mayer got together, and you can see the left front fender rubbing, and it's caved in there. That's yeah. going to hurt his aerodynamics, and he's falling back already. Yeah, fortunately it, it rubbed, but it, it looks like it went away. Now the aerodynamics are going to be messed up, but... There was a lot going on in that pack between... <laughs> between Joe... 
Ty Gibbs, as you see here, is trying to pass Chandler Smith. Loses control a bit, but watch behind them what happens. Yeah, he gets just a little bit loose right there, and Mayer tries to slide up in front of Sammy Smith, and there, there just wasn't room. Not a lot of friends it, it being looks, made in this race tonight. It looks heated to be Adam. It does. I mean, you, you talked about <laughs> the situation in the history with Ty Gibbs and Sam Mayer. I think we're starting to pay it forward a little bit. We're developing <laughs> we some storylines for the remainder of the season. Chandler Smith's looking in his mirror and saying, I don't really like the way y'all acted either. So. <laughs> well, and you know, Ty's frustrated because he had to go to the back. He's flying up through the field. But when he caught Chandler Smith, Chandler's run the line that he needs. And he's not able to get to his outside. And every time he goes to the inside, he's not able to clear him. And it's just become frustrating for him. You saw what a handful that 19 car was off turn four when he nearly got sideways and into the side of Chandler Smith. At the front, John Hunter Nemechek, 1.4 seconds. Jamie, you talked about Justin Allgaier. Go ahead, Mike. We talked about that right front fender. He's still running the fastest laps on the track. The only guy faster from time to time is Cole Custer, who's caught them in third. But that right front fender has broken loose. Yeah, and Michael, it doesn't seem to be affecting the performance of the 20 car. But my fear is when those body panels start flopping around, if some air gets underneath that, it it can tear that fender apart from the from the the bumper covers you see right there and it's it's stuck out that that can be a concern they're going to need to get some tape on that just to make sure that the air doesn't get up underneath it leaders have had problems today john hunter nemechek got that damage when he was leading popped the wall ty gibbs has his issues they have to render those on pit road this is the battle for second cole custer had some damage had to come back down he's worked his way to third behind justin allgaier and just behind them brandon jones you talk about needing a good run First year at Junior Motorsports, only two top tens. He came into this race 43 points below the cut line. But you look at what Daniel Hemrick's doing back in 28th. The door is open for Brandon Jones to have a good day. No, oh, this battle just will not go away. Ty Gibbs is, <laughs> is wanting to get to the outside, but he lost his momentum. Lost his momentum. Got into the wall just a little bit right there. And you see Sam Mayer is going to fill the void. It's incredible how loose the cars are on the bottom. You see Ty Gibbs doing it again. Sam Mayer's doing all he can to not let Ty Gibbs in line right there. Frustrated with each other. So much fun to watch. So much fun for us to watch. Those guys, those guys seem like they're not having much fun at all. Looks like they're very heated, as I said. If you knew nothing about the history of these two, the body language kind of tells the story. And look at Gibbs. That was pretty good shot yeah, in the wall. Total, a, a slide job going wrong. He drove in, tried to get underneath Chandler Smith, carried a little too much speed into that corner and, and got to his outside. You see all those guys are starting to slide around. The one thing, if I'm Ty Gibbs, that I would want to do right now is I'd want to figure out how to make that very top work. And that's something that I have noticed about the double zero. I see Sam Mayer trying to make it work right there, is that if you can't pass them on the bottom, you got to try to generate the run around the top. And that is where the double zero was so good this last run. And But how fun is this to watch? These guys are out of control trying to take these spots away from each other. And now they've brought <laughs> Sheldon Creed into the picture. <laughs> He's not scared to mix it up with them for sure. <laughs> Another that's good day just, for Shelton Creed. That's just some great car control. We see how loose and slipping and sliding these guys are. Ty Gibbs driving the 19 this weekend. Myatt Snyder going to drive it next week in Portland. And boy, he was outstanding there last year driving for Jordan Anderson. So you anticipate they will be strong there. Then we go to Sonoma in two weeks. Ty Gibbs back behind the wheel. He's never been there. Wants to gain some experience for his cup debut there. This is great racing. We can't wait to see how it all turns out. Worth the wait, 120 of 200 laps complete. It's the NASCAR Xfinity Series from Charlotte live on FS2.
It's a home game for NASCAR's Xfinity Series, racing at Charlotte. America's home for racing for the 78th time. John Hunter Nemechek in charge. He's led 44 laps so far in this race, but it's his teammate Ty Gibbs who led 52, won stage one and stage two. And after they spent all that time on pit road, Ty has worked his way up to seventh and starting to gain some ground on the front runners. Got a little right side damage after trying to do a slider into three, got a little high, but now finds himself, as you mentioned, Adam, in the seventh position. It, it's been a, a dogfight for sure for Ty Gibbs. But the one thing that we noticed at the end of the last stage is that it does seem like it gets a little bit easier for these guys to pass the more laps they run. The handling of the cars really comes into play. That's where we saw Cole Custer making all of his ground up. Uh, and Ty Gibbs has been able, you watch, he's been able to run really just the middle of the racetrack, Michael. He hasn't had to go all the way up against the wall uh, in, in order to, to make make time. And, and I was shocked because I thought he hit the wall pretty hard and the car would have some damage. but. Seems like the, the pace of that car is just fine. Yeah, he and Cole Custer that last time by this, as you see the double zero, two fastest cars on the track. Cole's third and uh, the talking strategy. Oh, there we go, spinner. And it's going to be our fourth caution of the night. Sam Mayer into the inside. Right front damage, guys. Probably going to have four flats. He was 10th and one of those drivers that had been driving his tail off yeah. in that mix back there. He had been really high, and that car did not look like it was handling well. So Ring. it's been about 35 laps since these teams pitted. As we look at it, getting away from him off the corner. Just ringing that high side and pushing the gas hard on exit. That's how you make time up there, and it just got away from him. Where all your speed is on the high side is from the center off. That's why you go up there and when you put the gas down and she doesn't stick, she's a handful. Yeah, if you're not able to carry the momentum from the middle off, it, it's just so far around the top that you can't can't carry any speed. You see it yawed out on him two thirds of the way around the corner and he just wasn't able to gather it back up. He was outside the playoff cut line prior to Dover a couple of races ago and Two successful outings at Dover and Darlington put him in a playoff position, but Oof. this won't help. Oh, tape's not going to fix that one. 71 to go now. Going to be, you know, right oh. around 70 or just inside of 70 when we get pit stops. The last time these teams pitted 35 laps ago, but everybody should have two sets of sticker tires in the pits. So even though they're not in their window, you would anticipate they come here, get a set, and they'll have a set laying if we get a caution later on and could have to make a green flag pit stop. It's so hard to be disciplined enough with your Sam Mayer when you have that flat tire trying to get back to pit road. You, you don't want to get lapped again, but the consequences are going too fast. You see that tire because it was flat spotted came apart and it's it's now ripped the fender off and and the aerodynamics of that car are just shot. Pit road still closed, so we remind you of this. Saturday is baseball night in America on Fox, and it doesn't get much bigger than this. As Aaron Judge and the Yankees battle Mookie Betts and the Dodgers, or the Guardians take on the Twins. Catch the action 7 Eastern on Fox. Check local listings for the game in your area. That's a baseball player. Do you know that? It was. And I, Second baseman. When's the last time you played baseball competitively? What age? 12. 12? Yeah. Me too. About 10 years ago. There I was go. a third baseman because I, base? so I, was, I was lanky. Yeah. Is I that wasn't, what it was? I wasn't lanky. <laughs> hmm. We were talking about strategy here. The fuel window we were given was, you know, right around 60 laps. Yeah. And, and we knew the caution would come out yeah, just outside is, of yeah, it. Every crew chief every time. down there is like, you got to be kidding me. Not again. Oh, yeah, this would be fun to watch. These guys try to manage they're, that. They're pitting. 
The, the good news for them, though, you, you, you really got an extra set of tires this weekend over what you would normally get, it feels like. Typically, you got one set laying for that final stage. You got two here. So you pit here, and then you got some options throughout the rest of the race. What, what are we going to do about that fender, Jamie? Man, I don't it's I want to put another up, tape on it for him. But listen to this. He's leading the race. He's fast. Care. Do they be, do they waste the time fixing the fender well, or just have the fastest pit stop? Well, they've got the best pit stop. We saw in the cup race earlier how what an advantage that number one pit stop was. I think I'd take a chance get some tape on it. Even when they pulled the fender on the earlier Ooh, stop, soft. He, but he didn't really yeah. lose a lot of ground right. when, he, when he made that pit stop. Here they are, Regan. Well, the great recovery continues for Cole Custer after going to the back when we restarted this race. Right now, about 10 to 15 laps into the run, his car gets too tight in the center and then gets loose off. He wants help with that in the seven car, Justin Allgaier. His front end was better that run through the middle, but he doesn't have any rear lateral grip, meaning it's sliding the rear tires. As you see, he's a little slow on the right rear. Josh? For the 21 of Austin Hill, he said the car has been really getting loose on him and then snapping on him on the exit. And then as far as the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek, no concerns about that fender right now. We just said the car fired off decent, and then it started to get a little bit snug. So they're going to make an adjustment for him. He said, I've led 50 laps. I know. What ben, do you want from ben me? Ben Bayshore is like, we're not putting tape on this <laughs> And they didn't fine. touch it. The tire changers right. did their no. job, and they won the race off pit road. Yeah, I'll take the track position. Top two, hold serve, plus three. For Austin Hill, Cole Custer went one in the wrong direction. Bad stop there for Brandon Jones, who was in the top five. Caution is out for his teammate, Sam Mayer. Sheldon Creed had to make a second stop. When we were going to break, watching some replays, saw a couple of cars get together on pit road. He was one of them. Tell me what happens here, guys. You see the eight cars coming right here. Sheldon Creed exits his pit stall. Oh, it's a little contact. It looked like he was probably trying to avoid Chandler Smith also that was pulling out Michael, and Josh Berry was there. So big you know, contact, though, for those guys. Usually the 
isn't the deal, Jamie? The spotters call them in and the crew chief calls them out. The crew chief says, go, go, go. And the driver does just that or one lane, one yeah, over. A hundred percent. But I think that here it is. It's 1050. We've been here for 12 hours. I just feel like it's it's mistakes people have made because they're tired. Two outside, 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 two Good news for Creed, got a bunch of stage points today. That'll help minimize some of the damage at the end of the night. Front row, Nemechek, all guy restart, 66 remaining. See Ty Gibbs already trying to make it three wide on Chandler Smith, who he's had a, had a heck of a time getting past in that last run. Man, they're squeezed in there. Look at Allgaier on the top. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're hugging each other now on the quarter panels, knowing that the race is getting down towards the end. Hill is there, Custer is there. Best running position oh, of the night for Austin Hill, who's digging to the inside. Justin Allgaier drove way down into turn three. It looked like John Hunter got a little bit loose because he was on his outside quarter panel. I was able to clear him right here. See if he can hang on. Allgaier makes it stick. First time he's been on point since the early portion of this race after he started on the pole. Was that today or yesterday? <laughs> I don't know. Look at this mess. Ty Gibbs caught in the middle is Riley Herps charges around the outside. Right of your screen for second. Hill in the 21. The 20 is Nemechek. There's Kaz Grolin, that 26. He's doing a great job inside the top 10. Struggled on Friday with that car, but got it tuned up today. He gets a little loose there. Ty Gibbs trying to take advantage. The two double duty guys, the 10 is Justin Haley, the 19 Ty Gibbs, they're ninth and 10th on track, or they, they were. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere you look, there's battles side by side. What great action. Yeah, great battle with the, the Junior Motorsports teammates right there. Josh Berry and Brandon Jones for fifth and sixth, going back and forth. Three Junior Motorsports Chevrolets in the top six. The leader is Justin Allgaier, and keep in mind, they have not won this season. They're 0 for 11, won 15 times a season ago, put three drivers in the championship four. One of their 15 wins came right here at Charlotte, courtesy of number eight. It's the only time JRM has won at this place. Carson Hosevar made the move there down into turn three on Kaz Grala, got that spot. Good comeback for Hosevar after he had the, the bad pit stop a while ago. He was outside the top 20. Yeah, yep. the, the big loser on, on this restart, guys, has been Ty Gibbs. We thought he was going to be able to drive back up there, but has not had a good restart and has lost three spots on this restart. You see him trying to fight back inside of Justin Haley right here. He, you know, Michael, it looked like he just kind of got stuck in the middle, got loose. You talked about Riley Herbst going by him on the outside, and he just lost all that momentum. Charging now, though, that's a big corner driving around the 10 car of Haley like that. Haley and Gibbs both pulling the double duty. They've been at it a while today, as you see Josh Barry way up high. Brandon Jones fifth and hanging tight. Regan? Adam having a nice run, and that's a team that's needed a nice run. A lot of problems as of late, not of their own making. Earlier this year, they were making some mistakes. Now it's been just getting caught up in stuff. That car has been tight all night long with so many others have been fighting loose and multiple issues. His has been consistent. Last run, he was just tight through three and four, looking good right now as he makes a move. And his crew chief, Jason Burdett, who's enjoyed a lot of success here over the years with Justin Allgaier. We shouldn't be surprised. That team's not going to quit and go away. Well, I'm going to say they got it freed up plenty for him now because Brandon <laughs> Jones had his hands full through turns one and two, got pretty loose on the inside of Cole Custer, and you saw Cole Custer drive away from him there. These guys, this is a great race. They, I mean, I this is... This is so much fun to watch them battle. I know they're all frustrated inside the car, but it's so much fun to watch someone try to get the run, do the slide job, lose the momentum. Oh, you see Riley Herbst. That was an example of what loose end looks like, and I think he might have an issue. Yeah, and there's a big bump on the, the entry to turn one, and you it almost looked like he had a flat tire, though, as he drove in there as fast as that car took off. Well, it's flat now for sure, as you see Ty Gibbs 
is around Barry and will continue charging forward. That's Chandler Smith just ahead. They're interesting together. Let's see what happens with these two as we watch what happens to Riley when he goes into one. You think maybe the tire's down already or is he just get low, got loose? Oh, no, looks like he just twitched on him, got loose, and then and he, and he got into the wall. It. Yeah. Turned those wheels to the right to save it. And, and Josh is, Berry was sixth, and he's sliding in the wrong direction here, Michael. Well, that 19 car has got the pace. As you see live, he's going on the inside of the 16 of Chandler. It's so frustrating when you got to try to pass the same guy <laughs> over and over again. It had that bad restart. Chandler Smith was ahead of him. See, Chandler doesn't race him quite as hard. You see, look, nice little slide job sliding up in front of him. The 19 car has got it gathered back up, making some of that ground up, up to six. Ty Gibbs trying to come back. He's sixth right now. Your top five with 57 to go. Allgaier, Nemechek, Hill, Custer, and Jones. We're live at Charlotte Motor Speedway. That four cautions tonight at Charlotte Motor Speedway. One of those courtesy is Sam Mayer, but the one has stayed on track. He's two laps down in 31st. Meanwhile, back at the front, things are tightening. Allgaier in command. Right behind him, John Hunter Nemechek. So let's slide this graphic in. Last 16 races last year for JRM versus the first 11 this year. So strong at the end of 2022. And number 20 is coming. Last few laps, Adam, a tenth better than the leader, and he is there. Yeah, and it seems lap traffic's played a big role in this as, as Justin caught this lap traffic. John Hunter was just able to, to manage through that a little better. It's tip oh, we see contact right there. Gets into Justin. Not bad, though. They both slide up. A little bit of contact with that sound. Every race you hard like that. Wow. So keep yourself in a good spot. Just uh, don't it on the door. Everything looks fine. What? What? What's air racing? I mean, that looked like a that looked like a slide job, but he wasn't in a position to do so. <laughs> that was crazy. 
with 49 laps to go. Justin did a nice job hanging on to that car. Seven letting it all hang out, Regan. Well, definitely let it all hang out in a great battle that we see for the lead, but he's got more to think about. We've got about 50 laps to go, right, or excuse me, 49 laps to go right now, and listen to this. All right, now I'm going to make it hard on you. Gap management, save fuel. Back the corner up 30 foot. Right now, gap is 0.6. Copy. All right, hold off Nemechek, who's no been boy. one of the best drivers this year. And gap management safe fuel. You got a whole lot going on there, as Regan said, if you're Justin Allgaier. Yeah, I mean, all, all you can do is he's talking about lifting a little early. I mean, honestly, the, the easiest way to save gas is to get wide open off the corner and then back off to like 70% down the straightaway, lift a little bit early into the corner. It's just, I mean, this whole, the whole saving gas thing is about being efficient. It's about running the fastest lap time, but also saving the most amount of gas. I thought lap traffic is what allowed the 20 car to catch up to him, but I'm going to say that, that a lot of that was just saving fuel. Let's get an update. 20 radio, what are they thinking fuel-wise? So based on the last read, we're about two laps short here. So uh, we're going to keep going hard for maybe another 15 or so, and then we'll back you down. Now, we heard this morning in the garage the fuel window. I right don't around, like that theory. Right around 60 laps. These teams pitted with 69 to go. And my thought is, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of a cool night, and they, they're not backing grip. out of it. They're going, right? Which right. means you're burning more fuel. This, this might be a really, really interesting finish if we don't get a caution. Well, and the information they gave the 20 was they were going to let him go a little bit longer, about 15 more laps, and then they'd start saving. I just, there's so many times that they ask you to save fuel and you don't really slow down as you're saving fuel. And I, I would rather try to get a little bit for 45 laps than to try to go hard for another 15 or 20 and then save even more. They're, they're hoping for a caution though, Michael. I, I'm just a little confused by that charge of Nemechek. He was out running our leader a couple, a tenth or so a lap and got there and nearly made the dive bomb pass. Right. And now he's just faded back. So maybe indeed, John Hunter said, well, I gave it a try. Right. I'm going to roll out and save a little fuel. Because really, ever since Allgaier nearly lost it and kicked it sideways, he's, yeah, he's been able to off. pull away. Yeah. Josh Berry trying to make a comeback late in the run. Was up in the top five, drifted back now to ninth. Justin Haley, battling, 11th. battling just outside the top ten. That ten car's had a host of drivers this year, only two finishes outside the top 10. Jordan Taylor driving it next weekend in Portland. A.J. Allmendinger gets the wheel at Sonoma. Daniel Hemrick in the 11. He's 25th to lap down. Yeah, and he's got other issues. They're starting to catch the back end of the pack, so he will probably pass on getting the free pass. As you can see, solid run for Jeb Burton. Yeah, had a good qualifying run. Uh, and then backing it up with a, with a great run in the race. Good job for Jeb. Yeah, this team's performed well. One at Talladega, locked in the playoffs. Right behind him, Kaz Grala. And Adam and Jamie and I are brought to you by Firehouse Coffee <laughs> at this time of night. Yes, I'm not drinking coffee. You guys are on your own. I want to I want to be able to sleep later. Look at this charge, though. He's sizing up Jeb Burton. What would be interesting, Adam, if some of these guys that don't quite have the pace of our leaders, what if they can stretch it? We could see a real upset here tonight at Charlotte. Roll the dice, steal Let's the show. Do it. Both those Sam Hunt Toyotas were top 10 at Darlington. Grala and Connor, uh, excuse me, Corey Heim was driving the 24 at Darlington. Connor Mozak driving it tonight. He's 16th right now. I, oh. oh, man, just as I say that, that's the, the announcer jinx right there. Mozak with a tire issue, debris everywhere, 40 to go. Will this produce? Our fifth caution of the night. Yeah, it looks like he's got it down on the bottom. I don't know if any debris actually got up on the racetrack. And that has every look of scrubbing that outside wall. Yeah, no doubt. See that right side beat off of that car. And honestly, guys, I, I like watching fuel mileage races because you just don't know who's playing games. We Now we see the 20 car is run. <laughs> John Hunt or uh, Justin Allgaier yeah. back down. You think that's so, a regroup? So like, yeah, I mean, is he saving gas now in the seven a little bit more, maybe buying some time? I like the unknowns that go into this because as a driver, you just don't know what everybody else is doing. That is tight. Yeah, you're right. And, and 
you've been fortunate enough to win a couple of fuel mileage races in your career, <laughs> Jamie, and I, I know how much a fan you are of those. You well, seem bitter when you I, say that, Michael. I did win one fuel mileage race. It was great. I was dominant most of the race, though, and then able to pull it off right at the end. 48 Thanks laps led for Allgaier, most he's led this season, but he might not be out front for long. So here comes Nemechek inside of the seven, 39 remaining. Yeah, and there's no saving fuel right here. Just Justin doesn't not want to let John Hunter get by him in the race that they're having right now. Both those guys are going all out. We'll kind of see what they have. So close, he almost had him cleared. You could see John Hunter in there just battling that wheel. There's a tire mark on the side of that 20 car from the last time he tried to do this. Yeah, and the mindset for either of these guys is, well, if I can get to the lead, I'll save some gas then, but don't want to use too much up trying what, to get there. Look what's coming from behind. Austin Hill's been turning some really fast laps lately in that 21 car. Those two guys battling for the lead, that's going to put the sense of urgency more up for John Hunter. Yeah, and John Hunter is just packing air on the back of the seven car. The seven car is already loose, but by John Hunter driving in and getting right on that left rear corner, it's making the seven car even looser. And like you say, because of what they've got going on right there, Austin Hill is, is motoring them down right now. That's just visually appealing to Austin Hill. Battle it out, guys. I'll be there. 37 to go. Lap traffic there. Austin Hill lurking. Here's John Hunter Nemechek. Pulls up in front of Justin Allgaier. New leader at Charlotte Motor Speedway. 20 back on point. Yeah, and is going to return the favor of what he's been dealing with the last eight or ten laps with John Hunter. I think John Hunter's fast enough to get a gap and, and roll off that gas and save the fuel we've been talking about. Still got 36 to go. Whoa! I like those power slides. They're fun to watch. Look at the laps led tonight. You got 53 for Nemechek, 52 for Gibbs, 51 for Allgaier. You want some parity at the front? Boy, have we had it. There you see the numbers. Gibbs is continuing to charge. We talked how fast Cole Custer is. Ty has caught him. This guy's been racing all day long, charging late. Don't give up on Ty Gibbs. Swept the stages this evening before an extended stop and make a, a change to the car, and now he finds himself back in the mix. Three seconds behind, but up to fourth in the running order with 35 to go. Let's check in on Justin Allgaier's radio. Quarter of a second behind the leader. You can push pace nice and smooth, tail behind it. Give me to push now? Yes, you can push now. I would never let him go. Oh, it's so frustrating as a driver. You... You just, you want the information so you know what you have, right? And we heard him say that try to save some fuel and and it's so much harder to get past him now. But it's not an exact science. I mean, they're no, telling them the not. best they know. Just over 30 remaining. The battle is on for the lead again. Through lap traffic, all guy right there in Nemechek's hip pocket and, and maybe this is what he needed, the okay to go ahead and get him because he's doing it. Well, and is Austin Hill in the best position right now because these guys are now racing their brains out and not saving any fuel, but what a move by Justin Allgaier to be able to do that in one corner, got the go ahead to be able to go and, and had a little bit in reserve. And look how they've driven away from Austin Hill now. I mean, that's, that's impressive. What a show at the front tonight at Charlotte. Justin Allgaier, John Hunter Nemechek. They've combined to lead over 100 laps. 32 to go. We're going side by side. You miss nothing. It's been outstanding at CMS.
28 laps to go for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Charlotte. Justin Allgaier leads his advantage more than a half a second over John Hunter Nemechek. He just went by Josh Williams, put the 92 a lap down. So there are 16 cars on the lead lap. Among those, in 14th right now, 24 seconds behind the leader is Parker <laughs> Retzloff. But now, Adam, why do you mention this? All the leaders came down and pitted at lap 131. He said, you know what, I'm going to come down and top off at lap 133. That move could be enormous if this thing runs out because we know fuel mileage, a major question mark for all these teams. This is getting fun to see who's going to make it and who does it. Parker Retzloff last time by was just a couple of tens off of our leader, so he's got good pace. See if he's got enough gas to get there. No one else does. Let's hear about the guy in third, Josh. Well, guys, think back to the mile and a half at Vegas, and Austin Hill was patient in that race and waited while Chandler Smith had the lead, and Austin Hill capitalized late in this one. Well, not completely as happy with his car today, but he's been staying and waiting and being patient, but now it's time to go for Austin Hill, guys. I was going to make that connection earlier. This does remind me a little bit of what we saw at Las Vegas, where he just laid in the weeds, laid in the weeds, and then boom, he pounced late and was able to get one of his three wins that he's picked up this year. What about Parker? That's a good run for him in that 31 car. How about Carson? He's all over the back of Cole Custer. He is so fast at him. I, I don't know if he's auditioning for a ride next year. Obviously, he's full-time trucks this year, but lately he's been incredible in both series. We talked about what he did at Darlington a couple of weeks ago in his second career Xfinity start, three consecutive top fives in the truck series. He really has matured and grown up before our eyes really in the last month, six weeks. Yeah, he's, he's sort of changed his delivery. He said, you know, I'm thankful for this opportunity that I have, and I want to take advantage. I want, I want to race respectfully. I want to be fast, but I want to be fair. It's been fun to watch. Look who he's up there with, Allgaier Nemechek. Hill, Ty Gibbs, last year's champion, Cole Custer, and then Carson Hosevar in sixth. Hosevar's got premier securities on his car. That's a friend of the family's. They love NASCAR. They want to help sponsor this young man. So he's doing a great job for that team. It, it's so hard to figure out who, who has the advantage. Like you, we're watching this race with Allgaier and, and John Hunter Nemechek, and at one point, you're like, well, the seven just drove by him and drove away. And you're like, he's, 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 it's over. Like, I mean, he's just got this thing wrapped up. And now all of a sudden, here comes John Hunter. And all, he's the fastest car. So you can't, I can't tell if it's because of lap traffic or if it's because they're saving gas or if it's because of both. But they can't get away from each other. And it's so much fun to watch these guys battle this out. You know, you talked about uh, Carson Hosevar growing up before our very eyes. This is going to be a real test for him. Race against Cole Custer for a top five here in the Xfinity Series at Charlotte. He's got to stay patient. He can't overdo it and cause an issue for he and Cole. We'll see if uh, his money's where his mouth is and he's able to make this pass and not run into Cole Custer. Here's something else to think about as we manage all this fuel talk. Two guys inside the top six that aren't running for points. Ty Gibbs in the 19, Carson Hosevar in the 77. If someone is going to roll the dice, run it long, those are two that really have nothing to lose. Ooh, Whoa, that was loose. tight, man. Did you say lose <laughs> or loose? <laughs> what a slide off turn two that was. Look at all those guys sliding around right now. It's interesting to me that they have all went back to the bottom. I see the double zero at the top, but... But the two leaders have have are they're they're searching around and it's it's almost like maybe the traction compound or control is not as good. But I like this that we can see their throttle trace right there. You see the throttle, both of those guys. We don't. It doesn't look like to me they're trying to save any throttle. They're both doing everything that they can to get to the lead. So maybe they feel like at this point they've saved enough gas and both crew chiefs have kind of given them the go ahead that don't worry about saving me any from here on out. This is entertaining. 19 laps to go. It's back out to a half a second advantage. Yeah, but give it a lap. A, yeah. yeah, give it a lap because it just keeps bouncing back and forth. It's almost like maybe one's better at one end of the track versus the other. Austin Hill comes to pit road with 20 laps to go. He's getting four tires. I mean, I, I assume 
Well, gosh, I, is, I mean, would this well, be? Well, maybe he wasn't close enough. All right, let, let's go down to Josh. What's, what's the story there, Josh? He had a 21 coming in to get four tires and fuel, also making an air pressure, air pressure adjustment. Not completely happy with that car. But he just what, he must have not been anywhere right. near. So right. it's that the other guys were within two laps. They felt like they could save that much fuel. He must have been multiple laps down or, or multiple laps of not being able to make it. So he ran as hard as he could, and they just they, they had to pit. And they thought, you're better off to pit with 20 to go if you think you're going to have to pit and make up the ground with the new tires. Well, by the math, I, mean, I know they said they're too short. But given the conditions, as we said earlier of the night, the speeds they're running, the way they're racing each other, and how far they were off what their original fuel window was, you would just anticipate it's going to be difficult for everyone that's, to that's, make it. But That's my opinion. And, and we'll see <laughs> as, as got cars start to flare, peel off the banks of turn four and hit pit road, how soon will that be happening? This is a great battle. With the 21 pitting, Carson Hosevar is now in the top five. The leader, Justin Allgaier, Regan. Adam, we might be getting a little bit of insight as to where this seven car is right now. There's a lot of head scratching in all these pit boxes. Take a listen. Save if you want. In two laps, probably three. Did you get me two? Yes, copy. This is this is interesting to me. I, I, I couldn't answer it's a, that. It's a guess, right? Like he, he <laughs> thinks, say, how does he know he that? I could not that answer that question, fuel. honestly. But I'm going to tell you what, the, the move by Austin Hill's team to pit now and, and, and go ahead and take your lumps, if they run out of gas or if they have to pit with two to go, that'll be the winning move of the race by the 21 car to go ahead and take a chance now and see what happens. Because as you say, Michael, like, did you save me two laps? I, I think so is the answer there. But they've had to race really hard. I mean, they've been both having to push each other. You saw Jim Pullman on the pit box. He's an absolute wreck right Total. now. 14 to go. What do you have, Regan? Another element to add to this, Adam. I checked with a double zero at Cole Custer, and they had told their driver on the radio were one and a half to two laps short. He has been saving very heavily this entire run, and the 31 of Parker Retzloff, who pitted after everybody to top off, checked with Josh Graham. He said, I'm about two laps short. I asked him if he was going to stretch it. He said, absolutely. He's 13th right now, is Retzloff, and the last car on the lead lap. And look left of your screen. 21 got those tires, and he's trying to drive back and jump onto the lead lap. He had lost a, a lap in that exchange. Right now, he's 15th and uh, a couple of cars back when you look at those drivers in the one lap down category. And when he went by, that was Carson Hosevar taking that fourth position away from Cole Custer. Yeah, what so a run he's having. It's another car that could possibly win this race. I mean, these guys are pitting the 16 right now. Chandler Smith, with, with 13 laps to go, they're that far from making it. How do you possibly have those other guys be able to stretch it that far? Well, I mean, I, I don't think he's 13 laps from being able to make it. I, this is the situation of, of just of pitting now and trying to make up the ground, you know, with, with, with putting the tires on like we saw from the 21. Yeah, but the 16 didn't. He needed fuel. They came in and got gas, and now Ty Gibbs hits pit road. I don't think any of these cats are going to make it. We've seen a couple of Chevrolets in. Now we see our first Toyota. And, and the 21 and 16 a little bit linked, right? There's an alliance there between RCR and Colley. Well, and the, the, the other factor is maybe they didn't get those cars completely full, thinking that, you know, a little quicker pit stop. The seven obviously feels like they got their call from. I feel as we listen to the radio between Jim Pullman and, and, and Justin Allgaier, they, they think they were only two laps short and that he thinks he saved that much. They, they weren't 10 laps short. They're not missing it by that far at this track. More of the leaders coming to pit road. This is the second time we've seen a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota come in. We saw Ty Gibbs, now the rookie Sammy Smith, giving up his position for what's a scheduled green flag pit stop. Two Just tires. Over 10 laps I, I like to go. the two tires there, right? You, get, you got a little bit of grip, save five or six seconds by not having to go over and, and put the left side tires on. I think that's a great call. And it, it gives you plenty of time to get the fuel you need to finish the deal. Correct. John Hunter second right now. His teammates have already been in. Just let him know how much he needs so he knows what to do. Start saving hard here. I need to uh, slow down another half a second a lap. Oh. 
<laughs> I know. Like, that's what I was saying earlier. I just I like the fact that you want to get save. It. Just let me save a little for 45 laps. Don't don't stick me in that position of the last few laps of, of having it. It's so hard to do. But look at the advantage now as Nemechek goes into fuel save mode full on. He's almost two seconds behind Allgaier, and there's going to be eight laps to go. He's out when of they gas. Come I around think. this time. Is he out? Well, it looked like the seven was actually shaking his car as well. I don't know if he got loose on the entry to three. And he just ran a sec. Both those cars are second a lap slower than they were running. The thing is, the 20 has slowed down, so that's automatically allowed the seven to do the exact same thing now. Austin Hill has worked his way up to Four. ninth. And he's in front of Parker Let Retzloff, who we said could roll the dice. So Hill looking like he's in a pretty good spot right now, depending on what everyone else does. Well, last time by, Hosevar. He was a half a second faster than our two leaders. And we haven't heard anything about his fuel situation. We haven't heard whether it's save or not save, but knowing that everyone else is having to, he, he's going to have to try to save some. Well, and the fact that he's not running for points, why would Nothing they even lose, consider right? coming Correct. down pit road? That, just well, as we say that, you know here why? he is. Out of gas, I bet. Yeah, they, they knew they couldn't make it. Seven to go. Hosevar makes his pit stop. Cole Custer could be the interesting guys because he acted like he'd been saving fuel for most of that run in third place and we know those front two have been racing pretty hard josh barry made a stop brandon jones gets his service in the nine their teammates to justin allgaier who's leading he's been saving six laps to go for the driver out of illinois keep yeah. your eye on austin hill he got those tires he's run all the way up inside the top 10. he's up to fourth now michael up to fourth and 27 seconds back though he will they'll have to run out of gas for him to make make up that much ground. Everybody else is, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, everybody else is pitting, but those those front two have acted like acted like they could make it. And you see they've slowed down about a second and a half a lap right now. I mean, it, it looks like they're running way slower than they are. Five to go for Justin Allgaier. How, how much up on that wheel you think Austin Hill is? He's got that thing floor bat, floorboarded and trying to get all he can. You see top left of your screen, our track map. It's, he's a long ways back. I mean, what you see at the top left equates to 25 seconds. And it's only going to be four laps to go when they come around this time. And you see John Hunter, Michael, has slowed down even, even two seconds more. He's almost three and a half, four seconds slower than the pace that he was running earlier. And you can look at the throttle traces right here. Those guys lifting really early, coasting down into the corner. Minimal throttle. You see he's cracking the throttle back about 20% right there. The thing is you want to get wide open on the exit of the corner to get some speed built up, and then you'll start rolling out of the throttle again as you get three-quarters of the way down the straightaway. I would want to be running the line that John Hunter is, though. Not where the seven is, way up the hill. It's shorter around the bottom. Let's get some seven radio. Let me know where the 21 is. 21 is 26 seconds back. Custer is way off the 20. <laughs> Three to go for Allgaier. Hasn't won this year. And when you talk about drivers that can afford to roll the dice, Nemechek's won twice. He's got a lot of playoff points. He's got money in the bank, so they, they can afford to roll the dice here, too, if that's what they choose, and it appears they are. Top three have not been to pit road. Austin Hill, 20 seconds back, but we know he is good on fuel. Two laps remaining for Justin Allgaier. Can he nurse it three <laughs> more miles for his first win of the year? Be the longest three miles of Justin Allgaier's life right here. This is dramatic. An economy He'll run. He's going to the white flag this time. Keep lifting entry. You know, looking at that throttle trace, he wasn't saving as much as I thought he would have to in order to make up that time. <laughs> White flag is out this time. White flag one, right here, coast. One coast. lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Can Justin Allgaier get there? Looking inside. All clear, coming checker. Well, he's got an eight-second lead on John Hunter right now. He can coast from right here. I just don't know if he can coast and still beat him. Junior Motorsports has not won this season. What a job.
saving fuel for Justin Allgaier. His first win at Charlotte yeah! is his first win of the year. Here's Allgaier getting it done. That's what I'm talking about! And they knew it the whole yeah, time, baby. Adam. Nice job. <laughs> nice job, Eddie. He told him he saved him two yeah, laps. Then so I you, saved you two I guys. said, yes, yeah. I did. And now Jim Pullman can breathe on the pit box. <laughs> and, 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 and I can breathe. <laughs> I still got gas. Nemechek finishes second. Cole Custer comes home third. Austin Hill stayed fourth. Ty Gibbs sweeps the stages, finishes fifth. Parker Retzloff, Jeb Burton both in the top ten. Great day for Jordan Anderson racing. Josevar was eighth. Back-to-back -back top tens for him. Brandon Jones, Sammy Smith complete the top ten. Let's see how much gas he has. I'm thinking of burnouts in our future. Like a, that's like a smoky unit fuel cell in that thing, I believe. <laughs> glad got that, plenty of gas in there. Yeah, that's a couple of laps worth of gas right there. <laughs> <It is>. Yeah. <laughs> but that feels good. You know, Justin, they told Justin what to do, and he said, I can do just oh, that. Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, they had, a, they had a plan, and they executed it, and he did a great job. I just can't help but think of, of John Hunter Nemechek letting him go now and thinking, oh, maybe I should have run a few more laps harder. That was fun, guys. Yeah, it was great. I love the suspense of, uh, of those fuel mileage races. Two big winless streaks ending here today at Charlotte. Ryan Blaney gets it done. Coke 600. It had been 59 races for him. 26 races for Justin Allgaier, who gets Junior Motorsports, their first win of 2023. And they have now <laughs> gone back to back at Charlotte. Beautiful Memorial Day paint scheme on that Unilever car. And look at that. Perfect way to celebrate the American flag on Memorial Day. Let's go in the stand. <laughs> I think they're chanting in the stands right now. Is that what they're USA, saying? USA, USA. Oh, that's cool. That's a special moment right there for him. 20th career win, qualifies for the playoffs again. That was intense. Let's go to Josh. Justin Allgaier gets his first win of the season, the first win of the year for Junior Motorsports. What was it like during those final laps as you had to conserve fuel to make sure you were in victory lane? I'm speechless, man. Um, you fans have stuck it out here tonight. Thank you all so much. The USA Chance, it's Memorial Day. We all know how important today is. Um, just so proud of this team to have the round canopy parachute team on the car, to have uh, the defense commissary agency, Unilever, all the partners at Junior Motorsports. Just cannot say enough about um, Jim Pullman, everybody on this seven team. We've not been for lack of speed this year, man. We've 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 battled and. Tonight was kind of the opposite. We had to go slow to go fast. Um, you're just so proud of the Hendrick Engine Shop, everybody at Chevrolet, Brand Fresh and Agriculture, um, just all of our partners. You guys, I can't even begin to tell you how long of a day it's been, how long of a weekend it's been. You guys all know this. Everybody that's at home that's watching, thank you all so much. Um, my wife, my kids are here. It's the first time they, my, my youngest daughter, Willow, gets to go to Victory Lane. And um, man, I can't tell you how much it means to me. I'm emotional, you know, as somebody that's, Grandfather was in the uh, in the Navy, served in World War II. Uh, the Round Canopy Parachute Team actually left this morning to go to Normandy to do a jump in Normandy on D-Day in a couple of days. So, um, just a lot of emotions tonight. Again, Jim Pullman, uh, the the guys on the seven team, the pit crew. <sighs> I know I'm I know I'm rambling on here, but um, I just I'm speechless, man. I really am. Thanks, Justin. Congratulations.
Well, John Hunter Nemechek, the other part of that cat and mouse battle at the end of the race there. How tough is it when you're saving fuel, but you can see the car that's leading the race right there? Is it to lift off of that gas just a little bit? Yeah, um, it was it was definitely tough to not push as, as hard as you could there at the end and try and run all guy back down. Um, we raced each other really hard, really clean. Uh, some arrow games for sure. Um, but overall, uh, our Mo one Toyota GR Supra was as fast as Xfinity 10G. And uh, I didn't do us any favors by stuffing it in the fence uh, before we had our whole rain delay today. So um, just hats off to all the guys, the effort to, at this Joe Gibbs Racing organization, the 20 team everyone at Joe Gibbs Racing back at the shop. And uh, man, if consistency is key to win a championship, then we are pretty consistent. So um, just got to keep plugging on and uh, we'll go click off some more wins. Thanks, John Hunter. Thank you. He talked about consistency. That's his fifth top two finish of 2023. And think about his last two races, what happened last lap at Darlington, the way he lost it to Larson, and here tonight. But hats off to Justin Allgaier. Outstanding ride. Leads 83 laps and gets his 20th career victory. More post-race coverage coming your way from Charlotte. Stick with us on FS2. It's been a long day, long weekend for NASCAR's oh, Xfinity Series. But for Justin Allgaier, it was worth the wait. He gets it done. Fuel mileage run. And he wins it at Charlotte. As we look at our top ten, some real good stories here, fellas. Yeah, I just uh, love these guys that battled all night long. Look at Parker Retzloff. Comes home with that sixth place finish. Great job for him. Yeah, and I'll take the other half of Jordan Anderson racing. The, the guy right behind him, Jeff Burton, had a great qualifying run. Follows it up with uh, another top ten after winning at Talladega. Great job by those two. And Adam, how cool is it to see Brandon Jones finally get a good finish? I mean, yeah. he's got speed. He was fast tonight and that finishes in 10th there just ahead of Sammy Smith. He gets his third top 10 of the year. Austin Hill was going for his fourth win. He ends up finishing fourth. Let's get more there down to Regan. 
Well, Adam, that's right. He does finish fourth tonight. And he was on what I'm going to call the alternate fuel strategy tonight. You guys decided to pit before anybody with 19 laps to go and then push as hard as you could. How much were you hoping to see those other cars out your front windshield slowing up out of fuel? Yeah, so we figured they were going to have to pit. So we were just trying to jump them. And, you know, we figured we'd bring them down pit road if we, if we went ahead. And, you know, maybe that one lap fresher tires could have got us to the lead and got the clean air. But... Uh, obviously that didn't happen so when I heard that I mean I was I was on you know full kill mode anyways and going as hard as I could and when I heard that I just started driving even harder and then then you start kind of slowing down because you're slipping and sliding and you're, you're almost trying too hard at that point but um, we didn't think that there was any way that they were going to make it our, our fuel mileage wasn't that great tonight and uh, there was no way that we were going to make it we don't think so um, but our Alsco Chevy was was fast all night as fast as Xfinity 10G and um, Everybody at RCR and ECR has been working really hard. We've, we've been top five in the death out of it. So, um, you know, if we keep doing that, we're going to end up uh, in victory lane again. So um, we just keep putting our head down and, and keep marching forward. Nice job tonight. Thanks, Austin. Fours are wild for Austin Hill. That's his third consecutive fourth place finish. You're kidding me. I'm not. I wouldn't do that at this stage of the day. <laughs> Lots of good stuff happening today at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Full recap comes your way tomorrow. NASCAR Race Hub back 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We got what happened here in the Xfinity Race and, of course, the crown jewel, the Coke 600. Here's what's happening next Saturday on FS1. Xfinity from Portland, second road course race of the year. Practice qualifying at noon, race day at 4. The green flag goes in the air, 4.30 Eastern Time. What a day it has been. At Charlotte Motor Speedway, 900 miles of racing, over 12 hours of television. It's almost midnight, so we say good evening, and we congratulate Justin Allgaier, who caps it off with a victory in that American flag. <laughs>